Hey, look at this, man. We got guests in the studio. How about that, huh? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, they normally don't need any introduction, but I'm going to introduce them myself. Uh, on the, on my left, over here in the studio, the lovely singer for the Nymphs, my, one of my favorite guests of all times. Hey, the lovely Inger Laurie is with us. And if you could speak just a little bit closer to the microphone when I talked to you. Howdy. Howdy doody. Let's, uh, let's crank you up just a little bit more so you can hear you. All right. All right. Uh, I think we got it. And uh, to Inger's left, my right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the man himself is with us. The he one and only. no introduction? None at all. Lemmy is in the house, okay? All right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm very excited to have you guys here. Um, apparently, there's a lot going on. Oh, um, yeah. With you guys, yeah. So I'm gonna try to crank this mic. Actually, I really need you to get a little bit closer to the microphone, both. Okay. Of them. Like right. this? Just a little bit. There you go. Okay. Cool. All right. I think we got it right cool. there. That's about right. But anyway, yeah. First off, thanks a lot for coming down. Oh, thanks for having us. Um, sorry about all the screw ups trying to get you guys into this place. It's like locked up, like Fort Knox in here sometimes. You Why know? Is that? Are you rich? No, I'm not rich. Definitely not rich. Um, the writer's pro- strike. Yeah, they've got the writer's strike going on, and all the security guards are sending him home early. He's doing uh, how, two how jobs. Do you, how do you strike when you're a writer? What do you do, like put the pen down? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably it. Stop typing. Exactly. That's what I do, dude. I just, you know, I stop because I do some writing, but... Uh, that, that's it. You know. Exactly. Put your hands underneath your hands like that. What's that girl at Saturday Night Live that used to do that thing? Yeah. Then? Oh, yeah. And smell them. Yeah. You know, whatever. Oh, God. I wish I hadn't done that. <laughs> it's not good. Did you knock yourself out there? I do. I do. You junk man? Nah. Bottle well, that you know what? And sell it. I did. Well, I did. Yeah. Ode to junk. Mm. Something like that. You know, it'd be mm-hmm. kind of nice. Oh, I know that day. smell. <laughs> uh-huh. I've been looking so forward to having you guys here. I've been talking about this like all week, you know. Oh, yeah? I've been sending out posts on MySpace. I've been doing everything like that. I mean, you know, either one of you guys alone. Now, Inger's been here before, and we had some of the best times ever on radio. <laughs> Did we not? It was out of control. All right. I was... I was Welcome, I never got invited before. Well, you know what? You didn't know You're... me, Lemmy. Uh, yeah, she has my key, too. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, it's... I'm it's Lemmy's a... biggest fan. He's going to be everywhere now, I'm telling you. Well, he already I'm is, apparently. publicity team look bad I, you I'm know back. yeah no he's uh he's amazingly talented and really really bright and we're doing this thing for the simpsons you know right uh matt groaning is an amazingly smart man as well can i just say here that yeah simpson is my mother's maiden name is, is it really? really just another little that's one little of those me- little, tidbit. Things. little tidbit wow that is really <laughs> weird and cool so it was meant to be what's weird about it, it's just a you know, coincidence. Exactly. Yeah, I love those coincidences, <laughs> though, because yeah. that shows you that, obviously, that was supposed to happen for some woo reason. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Well, did you see that, too? Do, yeah, <laughs> so you guys, you guys are actually going to be voices on The Simpsons, or well, is it actual, actual characters? This is what it is. No, actually, a, oh, I left it in the car, Chuck. Can we go up there and get it? It's a All comic right, we might go out thing. and get it. Yeah, I, I brought you one to show you. Okay. They uh, used Alice Cooper... Gene Simmons, who is the other one? guy? I forget. Rob Zombie, yeah. Rob Zombie, yes. And um, basically, they for this Halloween issue, it's called Bart Simpson's Treehouse of Horror, and they like to use rock stars, and they like to have rock stars write it. Right. And what they didn't know is, you know, I went to school for cartooning. I was going to work for DC and Marvel Comics, but I went into the music thing instead. So I never really get to use that cartooning muscle. Uh-huh. And when the, I show, I did some inking and just for some spare money, and they were like, "Wow, it's really good. You know, maybe we could use you." It's when you cartoon, it's called on model, and on model means it has to look exactly like the cartoon looks, like. For instance, like when you draw Marge Simpson, mm-hmm. you draw her eyeball, it's completely round. Mm-hmm. And from her top of her hair, which is really high, to the bottom of her chin, it's like eight eyeballs, they call it. Wow. And you measure it. I and, measure them in eyeballs? Right. In eyeballs, measure yeah. measure them in little round eyeballs. <laughs> it's a new term. <laughs> and so, you know, Better it needs than metric. to be drawn exactly. <laughs> the Afghanis, right? <laughs> they got big eyes, too. <laughs> so this doesn't have to be drawn on model. It can be drawn any way. Okay. You know, as long as it's... It's hard to explain, but it's a lot more so freedom. So she's going to draw it anyway. Yeah, so uh, I'm uh, going to draw uh, it, and Lemmy wrote it, and it's amazing. When I when I called Lemmy, if he wanted to do the job, I mean, Simpsons, everyone knows it. It's an American staple. It's really, it's a well, flattering I'm Sure. I'm English, though. Well, I think they know that. But, but no, you know, it's they, more than just American. Music. They love Lemmy. They wanted Lemmy. I know, it's really international. Really? Yeah, time. and like, so Lemmy's, I called him like, uh, 
okay, well, let's talk about doing this. And he said, oh, well, it's already done. So I was really impressed. He did the whole thing in one day, and it was Sweet. done. So he's a pro. And now my job, <laughs> now i got to draw the whole thing. Right. So. It takes significantly longer. A little know. bit, yeah. But are you going to actually make a cartoon of Lemmy himself, well, or is it going to be is, like a yes, different character? Yes, Lemmy so. is in the cartoon. But I, is it going to be actually... I'm going to write a story without putting myself right. in the But he I'm talking about... In. But I mean, is the character actually going to be you, or is it going to yeah. be somebody different? No, it's okay, it's going to be you. Bart's okay, hanging good. out with Lemmy at most Tavern. <laughs> They're hanging out and... In the uh, pit, at the pub. Homer is drinking, yeah, with Lemmy in hell. In hell. Oh, Seriously, okay. they are in hell. Twice, right? Let me twice. <laughs> they go back twice. You didn't believe it the first time. Right. So back. <laughs> Perfect. It's very funny. And, uh, you know, they said when they read it, like, very rarely do they read the scripts and you actually laugh out loud because he's funny as hell. Of we course. actually worked together before on this little indie movie called Down and Out with the Dolls, and it was about a girl band in Portland. And uh -huh. Lemmy played a tenant that a, was a, 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 a speed freak that lived in a closet. <laughs> and it was so brilliant because he just did these crazy it's ad libs. Thing, you know, like. Right, exactly. Uh -huh. exactly. <laughs> he did these ad libs, and the director kept pretty much all of them. Uh -huh. Like everything he said off the top of his ha head, and he had to just pretend he was crazy. It was brilliant. What There's was a stretch, huh? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Let's see, look at this face. is a like, beautiful method thing. Acting, you know. Exactly. The movie was like two hours long. I think Lemmy was in it for ten minutes. He stole the whole movie. Naturally. And I knew, like, wow, that when guy got ten minutes after, is funny. Exactly. Yeah, and I remembered that. So when I got the Simpsons thing, you know, I remember, like, this guy is talented. He's funny. And sure. that's what comics Stop. are. <laughs> Can't take it, can you? <laughs> No, not no, no questions. I'm letting, I'm letting it run. I want to, I want to know about oh. this myself. This is great. I thought you were gonna ask. Uh, sorry, a minute ago, I thought I heard you go. Like, no. I, you're probably right. You're probably a lot right. more aware. But I'm down, but, but uh, down, and, down and out with a doll. So I have to look that one up. It's yes, a good, it's a good movie. he's yeah. so funny. Now, how, how long ago was it out? How long ago was that? Like four five, years ago, five, five years. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that was the big selling thing. When Matt Groening immediately just went bam. No, you know? no, it was um. He just called me and he's like, "What musicians do you know?" And I threw some people out there and I and I said it would he'd probably be good because he was very very funny in the movie. Like people that are naturally funny and charismatic, like to to write something a comic specifically. Like Bill Wyman, you know. Right. You have to be <laughs> funny and charismatic or else it's just gonna be. Not every rock. I love it, man. <laughs> that went over my head. I just I'm gonna look like Marty Feldman when I get done today, because both of my eyes, from looking at you guys, are gonna be like, you know, going in two uh, two different directions. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, exactly. What right? happened? Um, you know, actually, did kind of look like this. And you get the run, and I get the run to Tyvin. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I just saw that play up in Seattle one. That's that, so fucking. Oh, it was hysterical. it's hysterical. It's now well, it's now a Broadway play, and I saw it. I saw oh, it in I Seattle. They always missed cast them, you know. Well, you know what? This one, they actually the came pretty close. I can't bear it, you know. Yeah. I, mean, I watched the first two minutes of it. I switched yeah. the TV up and said, that's it. I don't need yeah. it. Yeah. But with with this thing, they had it. They actually had it um, written. We're talking about the uh, the Young Frankenstein play. I went to go see the their, um, the test run in Seattle before it went Wyman, to Broadway. Surely. Yeah, I know. Well, without him, it was it, it really wasn't something. But some of the other people that they had in there was... Uh, How many songs are in it? Uh, a lot more than you think. Yeah, That's really. what they had to do to sell it on Broadway, you oh, know? Yeah, you know, yeah. So they had to do a lot with it. But, you know, they had a pretty good cast. I mean, they had Andrea Martin was playing Frau Blucher. Yeah. And Andrea Martin from uh, Second yeah. City TV. And they had, uh, um, what's her name? Megan Mullally played the, uh, she was, I don't know, some actress. Anyway. That's that's that. I'm, I want to know moving about this. Right along. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm moving right along. I want to know more about this. Now, this is going to be for a Halloween release, or yeah, is it? Yeah. Well, th yes, they release it for Halloween, and uh, I brought you one. It's actually a yeah. collector's item. The last one with, year, you know. Yeah, last year. Uh huh. Yeah. We have last year's for you. But of course, they're going to show it every no, year since it's the Simpsons, right? Oh well, you know, and a lot of the people they work with, they tend to. <laughs> it's a, a tight little organization. The Simpsons, oh yeah. And uh, double parts in a parallel universe, you know. Yeah. Sure. I think Bill might even be listening. I told him, so I have to give a shout out to Bill Morrison, who is the the head Simpsons guy besides Matt Groening. He's the guy who hired you, Lemmy, and he can't wait to meet you either. We gotta really? go down there. Oh, oh yeah. sure, I want to go on. I want to be a voice too. Yeah. I've always wanted to be on. Oh one of them. yeah, you, yeah. Because I could do I could do anything they ever want. Any yeah, kind of accent. Yeah, you have a great voice. Anything they'd ever want, I do about 150 different dialects. Do you really? So, yeah, yeah. Come on well, down well, when well, we go well, down. No, no, everything. All kinds of different I stuff. I want to hear you do the guy at the 7-Eleven. 
Oh, we're very nice. Oh, you would like to do this for the Inger and the Lemmy? Oh, the two of my favorite oh, customers. They're very good. Yes. What the vice in the back of my head. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know what? They already got one of those guys on the Simpsons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They wouldn't need so one. So what of them. don't they have? I could be a Pooh's cousin. Oh yeah. Okay. Can you do? He's cousin Junkman from the American. Uh-huh. Oh, he was most excellent. Can you do German? Uh, yeah, it's very, very fast to to the point, like this, you know. You have to very staccato. Very slowly because I you could. not uh, always enjoy Oh, I would imagine well, you do. You know. Now, this is a, a lot of things that our, our listeners might know. You have like a incredibly huge collection of German yeah. artifacts wow, from she World she War Two. Yeah, she just uh, amazing. Now, is it strictly World War Two or World War One or beyond? Both. And Everything. Both. And, uh, I got a couple of Civil War things, but not many. Stunning. They're rare, you know. Right. Literally, it would take a couple weeks. The great thing about weeks. the Second World War is it only happened yesterday, like, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> exactly. Well, for me, I was born in 45, you know, so it was only right. yesterday Thanks. for me, right? During the bombings and all the rest of that and all the no, rest of it? No, it all finished six months after they finished the war. You know, I was born in December, it finished in May. And now Pops Lemmy. Yeah, bingo. <laughs> Check that so out. They must have been at it before Sorry. the end of the war, right? Yeah. Probably in time to the machine guns. Probably. That's when you it's were created. Bad thing, you know. That's when you're created. So this is like really it. Hey, Roger. So what do you got? You got Jackie. You got Maker's Mark there. You got Jack and Coke. Adam, Lemmy is. Folks, let me let me let me tell you that Lemmy is uh, on his first Jack and Coke of the of the studio day. Second one of the day. First first one of the studio time though. Yeah. So to see now. Water. And water for you. Absolutely. Make sure you know I just cracked open a water. Hey, we (laughs) we talked about that the last time you were here. Water's weird. Fish fucking. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> this is true. And you never know, you know, when you. And get occasionally in, I do too. You when know. you're getting this clear water from a mountain stream, you don't know oh. what died upstream. It's so <laughs> true. <laughs> That's brilliant. So uh, I've had that scene. What movie was it where the guy head inside the dead buffalo, pull out his insides, and it was lying in the water? Right. I was thinking of that scene, and I'm drinking water. You you're know, just kind of like, like eh, maybe. Really I hope it's it appetizing. Hope it's been and filtered enough. Thing, though, they got rose. And uh, strawberry flavored water. Rose water? I know. What's up with that? I, I don't know. Who makes the rose flavored? Oh, beats me. I want to try that. Who Probably cares, taste. You know, I mean, I'm never going to buy it anyway. So look, there's, there's. going to be one of these with Lemmy. You see how? That's the card. That's Cooper, it. Cooper, Gene Simmons, right. Rob Zombie, and Pat Boone. I don't know how he got in there. He always gets in and covers Black it was Sabbath. He made that heavy metal. Movie. Yeah, he did well. Yeah. Up with Pat Boone and Trying the heavy metal hard, thing. Yeah. It's bizarre. He has a manager that's that's rather creative, is what it comes down to. I guess. That, is that what well, it is? Well, Pop Boone's creative. Remember that great version of Tutti Frutti? Oh, God. Yes. Don't remind me. <laughs> so, like, you see how like this looks different than I the took regular credit. Simpsons? Do you know what I mean? It's drawn. It's thicker lines, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So it's drawn off model. That's what they call With it. With a lot more shading. Deep, right, right. And this is a different artist. And Marge was young, see? Yes. Right? <laughs> and uh, could afford the hairspray. This yeah. one is for you. Oh, man. I'm so honored and to have And when it. me and Lemmy have ours, we'll have to come over here and sign it for you. Well, you're going to sign it for me today before okay, you leave. I'm we'll not leaving. that one. You're not leaving until you do. Okay. And, uh, you know, they gave us this, which is really interesting. This tells you how to draw The Simpsons. It's really cool. Oh, Check sweet. Out. Like you really need to know. You know. I said when it was like eyeballs and like, you know. Right. Like balls. Right. And balls. see, like over here. This shows balls. you. You know, how to do it she right said here. balls yes four short eyelashes no not right. one long one right so you know it's well as you said you measured in eyeballs before there you true. go that's right. how you do it even the Simpsons are very regimental absolutely yeah. well they have to be it's because like Victoria <laughs> very <laughs> and this is where Lemmy's story takes place I like that in Moe's Tavern oh of course yeah that's where you start where you like playing yeah. pool or just chilling out at the bar no, and Phil's in it too that. What's that? Homer was in there. Homer was Does in there. Does Phil okay. know that he's in the comic? Okay. Yeah. No, no he doesn't know He yet. doesn't know yet. Oh, Phil's in it as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Phil Phil Campbell we're talking about, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Cool. He's a big Simpsons fan. He has the Simpsons. Really? Chess. You're kidding really? me. Really? Oh, he's going to be so happy when yes, he finds he that I'm, out. I'm almost afraid to tell him. <laughs> he's going to have a heart attack, huh? He's going to be hell in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, then he's going to try to get it on it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and they didn't include Mickey in it. Who? Mickey. Uh, I didn't quite get Well, I, Lemmy I, I wrote it, so Mickey he can... Here. You could. Do you I want could. him in it? They'll be in the sequel. Yes. In the second one. You know, it's really funny that you said that, because and that's what he says on the last page. Well, he said, yes, I know. I said, uh, I said, the plot ends, I said, which leaves ample room for a sequel. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Well, right, you know so what? I'm going to write myself out of the business after one Hell show. Hell no. <laughs>
I'd, I'd I'd be I'd be I'd be honored to take any any part that you got for the sequel there. I'll even do the I'll even do the introduction for you. If I'll you bring want. you a sock. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pull over your head and rubber band. Right? Hey, so do you have any of that stuff that Steve Vai played on? He brought a whole bunch. You guys brought yeah, so much music, man. Yeah, music too. There's. Mm-hmm. And I know I know uh, in a few First we're gonna. Track on that show, Steve Vai. Let's listen really? to the Steve Vai Motorhead, and then we'll listen to the evil song I brought. We could do that. Okay. Because I know Lem wants to go out and have a smoke out oh, there, and we we're in like one of those non-smoking rooms around here. Go yeah. take a smoke when but the song's playing. Before we, do, before we do, <laughs> we got so much stuff that dissed. I want to cover with you guys. Did you just got what? Dissed. You got dissed by Lemmy? Calm down, kid, yes. Consider yourself lucky. He doesn't just diss anybody, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. If you guys are tuning in for the first time, yes, folks, uh, I do have Lemmy and Inger Laurie in the studio with me. Um, it's unbelievable, all the stuff that we got for you. L-O-R-R-E. Oh, okay. But what we got for you, we got we got a, a, a track, a, a, we got That's Inferno. Uh, but one album. Okay. Came out in 2004, I think. With Steve Vai on guitar, it's you said? really on the, the best sounding on the Motorhead first track. record I've ever heard. It's really fucking amazing. Well, let's play it, man. Check this out. Let's play it. We're going to do some of that. And then we've also got uh, some of your other stuff from Headcat, too, which is your yeah. new band. We're going to be talking a lot about that, too. So. It's a new band that plays oldies. Yeah. Very interested in that stuff. And yeah. it's, it's very, it's a big a big step away from Motorhead, but not really, really? you know? Not it's really. just, it's... It's all rock it's and roll. All yeah. Rented, you know, like. Yeah. But it sounds like a lot of fun. I know I've... You've you've done a couple of live things. Of course, it involves um, Jim Phantom from the uh, Stray Slim Cats. Jim Phantom, owner Dan of the Cat Green Club. Harvey from the Thirteen Cats and Levi and the Rock Cats. Right. Sweet. He was in Levi and the Rock. Yeah, the yeah. Rock Cats were killer. What did man. he play for Levi? Lead guitar. Oh wow. Well, we're gonna get this track. I'll go with track one off of. Uh, you go, Steve Vai right fans. Absolutely, Steve Vai right. fans. You want to introduce it? There, let me get up close yeah. to, the, to the mic. This is a track when uh, Steve Vibe came in the studio and played lead for us on a track, and he sounds like he's been a motorhead all his life. Listen to this. All right. The real soulful lead that, that we were good. listening to. The one that I love. Sound like a real DJ there. He did. You might have a future yes, in this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lemmy oh, Radio. Welcome. It's another fine day here in Southern California. <laughs> that's going to be the traffic report. Now. That's going to be the easiest job in Southern California is like weather reporter, right? right. You know, or, it's or the guy in the helicopter. You know, right. Well. Wow. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Looks like it's going to be really out there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so some Motorhead. Uh, Lemmy's going to go out and have himself a smoke. I'm going to go play some Motorhead for you guys, and we'll be back uh, with Lemmy and Inger in just a moment. It's knc.com, the loudest.com on the planet, and for some reason this thing is not queuing up on the CD player. So it's a problem here. Ah, we got a scratch in there, do we? Oh, scummy. No. Let's try this. Oh, wrong copy, sorry. Oh, no. Uh, let's try it. We'll play it anyway. Try it one more time, and if not, we'll give you the head cat. Okay. Well, I got the head cat right here. Which will disappoint the Steve Vai fans now and... Yeah, well, you know what? I think the Steve Vai fans are going to have to wait for a little while, because this one is not going to track on the CD really? player, so... No. Um, That's strange. We'll, we'll see if we can clean it up on the break or something like that, maybe play it in a little bit. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about it. in the car, have you, Roger? Tell yeah, the listeners... An inferno, no? Yeah. Tell the listeners a little bit about head cat, then, uh, just a little uh, bit more. Well... I've known Jim Phantom for, uh, what, 30 years? Uh-huh. When, when he moved to London, I was one of the first people he met, which was most unfortunate for him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he came out to live here a few years before I came over to live here, and uh, when I did, we found we were living opposite each other. Wow. So, uh, I don't know, we just hooked up for this Johnny Ramon thing, the tribute to Elvis album, right? Mm-hmm. And we did the track for that, and we were done in, like, a quarter of an hour, because we know Elvis songs, you know? Right. So uh, we're sitting around playing old songs, and with Danny as well, he was on it, you know, and then we said, well, why don't we make an album, because we all know all these songs, and we did it in two weeks, mixed as well, you know. No kidding. This was about seven years ago. And Do then, you sing all of them, Lemmy? Yeah, and then two years ago, they asked, they, they, they said, if you had some downtime from Motorhead, can we go on tour, you know, so we did a few a few dates. It's only been four or five in a row, ever. Hey, there's right. some really exciting news about Motorhead, too, about February, tell them. But well, we're going to be really, talking about... Well, we're doing a new album. Brand new one. Starting yesterday, and I haven't been there today or yesterday, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of you were watching the game, right? I would imagine you were watching How the game yesterday. How is that going to get finished if you didn't show up? Well, it's only two days. Okay. I mean, don't, don't... <laughs> don't wait for him. Trust me. <laughs> right. The vocals, at least. All right, well, here's a little stuff from Headcat. This is brand new with uh, Lemmy and uh, 
Slim Jim Phantom and quite a few other people. No, but uh, just three of us. Danny just three of us. Harvey. Okay. All right. What's his name again? Danny V. Harvey. Oh, Danny V. Harvey from the Rockettes, right? Yeah. Okay. So we got the trio going on right now. So anyway, we're going to be back with uh, with Lemmy and Iggy. Actually, Inge on this track, there's also George Stefanovic from uh, Serbia on stand-up bass. Oh, on stand-up bass. Okay, cool. Sweet. Slapping. Yeah. All right. Cool. Here we go. This is uh, something you're going to like. <laughs> and let me and Inger will be back in just a minute. It's KNAC.com, the loudest.com on the planet. Groove on this. If you hear somebody knocking on your door, if you see somebody crawling across the floor, baby, it'll be me. And I'll be looking for you. If you hear a voice going out in the night, if you see somebody hanging from a broke street light. Baby, it'll be me And I'll be looking for you Gonna search in the mountains And in the deep blue sea Gonna search in the forest And look in every tree If you find a new face on your totem pole If you find a new lump in your sugar bowl Baby, it'll be me And I'll be looking for you on the net, knc.com, the loudest.com on the planet. That's uh, brand new from Head Cat, featuring uh, Lemmy and others. Cool, dude. Very, very rocking. Well, yeah. Absolutely. That's right. Is there anything you do that's not rocking, Matt? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I sleep. <laughs> you got to be rocking sleep. I rock out of that, you know? Like, well, yeah, you can. Depends where you sleep, I suppose. I suppose. Yeah, so you're sleeping with <laughs> light, you know? <laughs> Janice Chaplin, I suppose you could say that was... Right. She'll be sleeping for a long time. Well, yeah, in the ashtray with her, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome, man. I got so many people that are here on our chat room that are just like, just in awe of you right now. And they're... they're are they ready? Well, they're coming up with different things. Like, a lot of people are talking about... We're, I'm going to have to back up on this a little bit. There's a, Somebody wants to talk to Inger, but she's left the room for a moment. Unbelievable. Somebody said, you should have a show here on knc.com. They said they they want you to be a DJ. Yeah, I should. You're right. <laughs> Put me out of a job, right? <laughs> <laughs> You'd probably double double my listener uh, count, yeah, though. I, I would imagine. Your, I could be your um, in the background assistant. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you could be my partner I for like. I only give you the tracks that I want. You know, like to play. That, you, that the engineer. You up by the end of the show, yeah. Engineer Lemmy. Yeah, <laughs> Lemmy, Lemmy the engineer. <laughs> Playing nothing but uh, you know Beatles songs, rockabilly songs, and uh, of, of course Motorhead. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about that. With the occasional, you know. All right. Oh, door, yeah, right? you got to get her in there. See, I knew you guys were going to lock yourselves out of there. Um, plus, he's a doorman too. Look at him go. Look at this. It's the butler. It's Lemmy, the butler, opening up the door. All right, come on in, guys. We're live on the air right here. So. All right, Inger has returned. I'm back. All right. Uh, we're just grooving on some Hepcat right there. All right. Very cool. And you didn't hear it. You I missed did. it. I did. I heard it at your house. We were playing it really loud. She's heard it live. Man, I got to hear everything. I was lying. Mm-hmm. No. And no. that's why... Because I've lived in You know? <laughs> All cell phones will be turned off, yes. folks, well, on the air, okay? Yeah, yes. Just so you know. All right. So anyway, so you got this going on with the two of you guys. You're doing you're doing the comic thing uh, with yeah. the Simpsons. What else is going? on? You're telling me about a bunch of different things. Oh that... gosh, um, that and um, there's well, there's two movies. There's one. Oh my god, this is 
<laughs> Switch cell phones off when in the studio. Or you can have one like mine where you don't get any service, you know? Mine doesn't work at all. It doesn't all matter right. whether they switch it off or not. Yeah. Oh, yeah, go ahead. No. All right, I'm going to talk to Inger for a while, so Lemmy's going to go out and smoke for a little bit. All right. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, well, there's two movies that I'm working on. Okay. Uh, well, one is by Greg Gibbs, and it's a... One is by Greg Gibbs, a director who is probably going to try to stop down here right now. Good. It's called Hooked on a Feeling, and it's uh, actually a documentary about the nymphs, the right. rise and fall of the nymphs, and he has lots of... Really cool early footage, live footage of us playing, like, uh, stuff opening for Jane's Addiction. He has... He doesn't have that famous show that I, that we were talking about the last time at, oh, the, uh, yeah. at the marquee there? No, he's he's got his hands on that. <laughs> mm, I'd kind of like to see that again. Just, it's you know, pretty see if they got me in it. The, were you in that? It was I was, de- I was working at the club that oh, night. Oh, then you got to be in it. Everyone's in that. That thing is nuts. They're looking for us. They go through the whole club. I remember. Uh, yeah. Okay. Where's the redhead? Right. Where's the red? Thank God Lon had that limo because he we would just get in the car and we were out. Um, yeah, it's pretty amazing that you can actually start a riot. Mm, mm-hmm. That was fun. Uh, and the other movie is with a guy named Doug Friel. Hi, Doug. If you're listening, Doug is under the weather right now. Him okay. and his beautiful wife Elizabeth. They are a team. Uh, that movie is called Fix, and it's about Al Jorgensen in Ministry. Right. A friend, a friend to us. He's got. He's, he's signed something for us up there right. somewhere. He's around well, here. He's on the wall of Al, shame. You know he's a crazy. Absolutely crazy man. Yep, but we love him. Very, we love him. Artistic man, a wild man, and um, that's going to be an interesting film because a lot of people that were filmed for that film. It's ten years of road footage, which Doug. Doug um, shot. He was hired by Warner Brothers years ago to just sort of do a short reel, Mm -hmm. and he thought it was the craziest thing. Uh, People were doing all kinds of drugs, getting things stuck in their butts, and uh, (laughs) a lot of insanity, you could say, that he caught on film, and after a week or two, he said, this is the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life, and he'd gone on the road with the OJs and Michael Jackson and, you know, huge people, and he'd just never seen anything like Al Jorgensen, so he never wanted to stop, and he just kept on filming, and what he's sort of going to do, it's sort of going to be... a kind of a Spinal Tap thing, but not really because Spinal Tap was fake and all this stuff was live. And he's going back and all the characters that are still alive, it's kind of like we found these lost tapes and only now are we willing to talk about it. Right. Now, and, that, they're uh, go- now that they're gone, you can actually right? say something. <laughs> well, not that. Just now that some time has gone by. And, uh, you know, uh, El Duce was in it and mm-hmm. he's passed away. Timothy Leary, he's passed away. Uh, William Burroughs. And I guess... Uh, premise of the movie too is um, do do the chemicals open doors of perception do you need them why did Al feel that he had to push it that far or right. you know and there's going to be a lot of people that have never ever tried a chemical in their life you know people like Henry Rollins that are, you know totally against it totally against it well, you know, not everybody ha- not, not everybody has to have that feeling. I mean, I did, Isn't but I knew weird? I knew when I had enough. <laughs> I never you knew. had to be you had to be told when you had enough. You know? I still didn't know. You know, I just realized, wow, you know, I was wasting a lot of time. There's things that I could have been doing. I could have been writing a song or painting a painting. Right. I thought I was having fun and. You know, that's when it clicks over into something else. Those heroin stories you told on the first time they were on here are legendary. People still ask me about. Oh, those which stories. ones? Uh, the one about falling in your soup that time. Oh, that, that was, was Jeff a good Buckley one. story. Yeah, the <laughs> Jeff Buckley stories were good. Mm. Eighteen times the rehab. Oh yeah, and that's the only ones that I remembered. I mean, I'm sure there was probably more. It was probably around 25, but for sure 18. Yeah. What did that Amy Winehouse song touch touch home with you? you know, or what, that huh? song wasn't even around yet, man. I <laughs> no. could have written that. But song. I mean, when it came out, did it did it like give you a little, you know? Oh yeah, it's <laughs> funny, you know. But it's the rebelliousness that you get as an addict. That is the rebelliousness. Like I don't need that, and I'm cooler than that. And rehab is for geeks. But the poor thing has been like in the streets bleeding. She's mm-hmm. like. 80 pounds. She bleached her hair this hideous yellow, which I'm sure she thinks looks good. She's just totally not with us. And I think she's a genius, and it would be really sad 
for us to lose an artist like Amy well, Winehouse. It's like that with a lot of other people, too. I mean, it just seems now that there's an entire generation of people that are doing drugs but have no business doing them simply because they have absolutely no concept on how powerful these things are. Well, At least with us, it was it was an experimental phase and things like that. I'm talking about like our, I hate to yeah. say our generation, but I you think, know, yeah, people I, that have gotten out of our system a long yeah. time ago. I think we realized at the time that you know we get and get to a certain point right there when you and you're either going to die oh, yeah. or you're not these people they just think they're going they're going to be super people and last forever and nothing's going to hurt them and they can handle everything and they're just you're well, watching them go down, man. It's just the saddest thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, she was actually a very well-respected jazz singer for a I'm long about time. Amy Winehouse yeah, before she had this hit. I don't know if people know that. Right. And uh, if you looked at her before, it's really interesting because she was not. Not only was she not thin, she wasn't fat, but she was plump, mm -hmm. and I mean, not in, a, in an unbecoming way either. She right. was just like a big girl, really curvy, really curvy, not fat. At all, but like super curvy. I'm trying to like America Ferrera. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you now that she's lost weight, right. not when she was big. Like right. she's not skinny. She's very. She was very curvy. She had really big boobs and a butt, but a very tiny waist, and you know, no no flab. And she was a beautiful girl, like a lot fuller in the face. She didn't have any tattoos. She had didn't have the beehive. She just had plain brown hair and I don't know if she had something to prove like oh I'm gonna get these tats and I'm gonna do heroin and blah 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 it's almost like uh you know it goes with it like oh I'm gonna be a rock star and mm. once I make a million I need a red Ferrari and a mansion and I need to be on it's drugs an image thing. it's it's ridiculous because yeah. you know it's it's just a killer and I'm not telling people what to do and what not to do I did far too many drugs and uh you know and i'm not i'm not that person either like oh man oh, fuck you know yeah, i had some really good times on it too no absolutely not everybody's life is their own to do what they want and man you know people told me what to do and i nobody wants to hear that but nobody when you see somebody it. going overboard it makes you want to help them it out, is it's that really painful like look at britney spears oh, I mean, man. that's so painful but apparently her thing is is something a lot deeper because apparently she's been testing clean this whole month mm -hmm. so it's it's something organic it's something mental with i her. gotta jump in with this for, yeah. for a second i was just talking about this okay. before i like the wackier Brit i like the, i like the the fucked up britney a lot more than i like she's the hotter, original one huh? Huh. Yeah, I like her being fucked Why up. Why are beautiful girls that are crazy so hot to men? I, I just need to know. Ask any stripper. <laughs> <laughs> They'll tell you. But that's the daddy thing. Like, those girls all have daddy know. issues, right? But I, I like, I hate to talk about Britney on KNAC.com, but the fact is, she's <laughs> fucked up now. And I think it's she's a lot more fun fucked up than she was when she was trying Wouldn't to be this pop Wouldn't it be cool if idol. she did a punk rock song or something? I think eventually that might happen. Mm. Wouldn't it be cool if she, like, completely transformed into somebody that actually gets Gets it well, instead of like this idol for twelve year olds, you know. Even though she doesn't know it, she's doing death metal because she's mm -hmm. dying. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much, man. It's frightening, huh? Well, hey, do you want to hear a scary song? Absolutely. All oh right. yeah, you get a brand new now, one. Now this is interesting because I, you know, I went to my friend Henry Rollins. I've been friends with him for twenty years, and he has a radio show, and you know, he calls it radio. He's got a show. TV he, show too. Yeah. yeah, he's got a lot of shows. He's an actor. He's got a yep. publishing company. Henry has his fingers in a lot of pies. And you know what? The one pie that I wish he had his finger in right now <laughs> that he doesn't is what? is politics. Oh he, yeah. He, he would have been. He doesn't want any part of that though. He would have been my, my ultimate candidate for president. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Especially with the, with you know, I don't really want to get political because I really try to stay away yeah. from doing that on yeah. my show. Yeah. But look what we got to choose from this oh. time around, man. It's scary. Well, first of but all. But somebody like Henry, yeah. <laughs> who makes sense of so much stuff that people don't even think about. Hillary is so full of herself. Uh, I don't want to put anybody down. I, I think wanna... she could probably do a good job. And I think Barack is great, but I just think in, in the climate. <laughs> <laughs> you see that? I just got dissed again. My Lemmy. He told me to get out of his chair. Well, All right. He's I, Lemmy. This is a better chair, Lemmy. Are you really? I have to sit in this? He's oh, Lemmy. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> no, it's okay. Honey. If Lemmy says get out of your chair, yeah. you get out of your chair. Just so you guys, you know. I exactly. just think that with or the climate. Absolutely. It's, Absolutely. it's your chair. Absolutely. I mean, you know. It's like Archie Bunker. He says, get out of the chair, you get out of the chair. People have to know that this song was written with Bush intended. Okay. 
So oh, his channel, right? I didn't tell him what the subject matter was. I just told him play my new song, and when he heard it, he said, "You've got to be crazy, Inger. I do not want the Secret Service." Henry Rollins said that. Already no, showing up on my door, really? and then I, I gave it to Dave Navarro, who's also a friend, and I said, "Dave, play it on Indy," and he was going to play it, and uh, I guess he was scared by the subject matter too, but. You know what? You are the only one with the balls enough to play this junk, man. This is the debut on the radio, Let's and it's it called... I hope, I hope it don't come true, because then we get Dick Cheney. Oh, boy. Me, too. <laughs> there it is. Okay, and it's called Continue. Continue. It's, it's called, called I Want to Shoot the President. That's great. Thank you. It's a good It's a good title. Have you heard this yet, Lem? No. No? You haven't heard it? Well, Lemmy's about to hear it, too, so mm -hmm. I, I, want, I want to take a look at your face when you hear the words in this thing. It has to be loud. Oh, worry, <laughs> it's going to be very loud, so... <laughs> So you recorded this when? Oh, about a month ago. About a month ago, including you and uh, who when else? When I called you, remember? I said, I remember. Hey, check this out. It was like yeah. a week. Yeah, I went over to your MySpace page and I checked yeah. it out and I said, okay, yeah, come on on the show. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> uh, my no. friend Eric Mayron, he works for uh, Jay-Z and Dr. Dre, he does a uh -huh. lot of hip-hop, Marilyn uh -huh. Manson, he works right. for Beck. He designs computers, he's a genius, and right. this is all digital. I can't believe it because I'm so against it. You know, I love right. analog, but it, it, listen to how he made it sound. He's a genius. Okay, well, this is brand new from uh, from Inger Lori. Is it going to be Inger Laurie and the Nymphs, or is it strictly going to be Inger Laurie? Inger Laurie until I think of another band name, or who knows? Maybe I'll go back to the Nymphs. It's a good name. People know it. I don't Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's try it out. It's called uh, I Want to Shoot the President. I do. It's called I Want to Shoot the President. Uh -huh. Okay, it's called I Want to Shoot the President. So <laughs> you're about to hear it. saying that, junk, man. You just I keep do. saying it. I do. Well, you know. <laughs> what's that? Walt Disney Pictures. I think this is something that's actually uh, a lot of people are saying these days. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. Let's crank it up right here. We'll be back with uh, with Inger Laurie and Lemmy in just a moment. Brand new from Inger right here. It's KNEC.com, the loudest.com on the planet. Please, please listen up. So there you go. The live debut right there. KNAC.com, the loudest.com on the planet. The live debut of uh, Inger Laurie and uh, I Want to Shoot the President. 
Very cool. Yeah. Nice job. Oh, thank you very much. Nice job. <laughs> we were we were commenting too that uh, it. I want to hear that live. Oh yeah. Definitely want to hear that live with a great big band. Maybe you know me and Lemmy is the rhythm section. Well, you yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> that was written, and if and if you you'll understand. Head grimly. <laughs> <laughs> Ching. Like Roger Daltrey used to do with the tambourines, right? Yeah. Exactly. There you go. Two triangles make a trapezoid. Yeah, especially with a stick of dynamite. Have you ever trapped a zoid? Well, I'm, I'm the only I'm the only rock and roll person who rhymed parallelogram in the song. Did you? What did you rhyme what? it with? With what? On Motorhead. What did you rhyme it with? Um, one first day. F- Six day, five day marathon. We're moving like a parallelogram. Oh, all right. Pretty good. Very That's pretty good. good. Very that would have good. scored you really well in Scrabble as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you never get the P, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, that was so a good one. Enough owls. Sure. A lot of different syllables on that, too. So you would have scored very well. But uh, that is anti disestablishmentarianism. That's a cool tune, though. Okay. What, now this is going to be—is this going to be part of a soundtrack, or is this going to be know, part of a full-on record, or what? What do you do with it? Soundtrack. The way that it, happened well, was yeah, <laughs> sound. sound on. My friend John. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> oh no, it's all good. It's okay. It's all right. Engineer <laughs> Lemmy has spoken. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. But so what? Do you, what oh no, my friend Jonathan took me. He's like, you got to go meet Manson. He's really cool. So went to meet Marilyn Manson and a. It turned out he was a big Nymphs fan, and that was cool because I'm a fan of him. I mean, sure. his whole show is very theatrical, very artistic. And uh, I don't know. He was just like saying, oh, You're that's what happened. <laughs> no, no. He loved oh. it. Absolutely. He loved said he it. liked yeah. uh, this Great song. Show, apparently. The Jeff Buckley song came on, and he said, this is my favorite song. And I said, I wrote this. And he goes, no, you didn't. It's Jeff Buckley. And I said, no, you know, he's covering a song that I wrote with a friend. And so... He said that was his favorite song, and I said, well, if you really like this, why don't you let me write something for you? And he said, go ahead. And, you know, since he was supposed to be all shocking and stuff, that's why I wrote this song, like, I trying mean, to push is, the envelope. All shocking and stuff. Yeah. I mean, the man grew tits just for an album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he did, huh? <laughs> yeah. And then you saw him the week after, and they were gone. I don't know how he did it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> he did it either. <laughs> Back in the day, they used to say, if you smoke too much pot, you'll have that happen, yeah. you know? Yeah, but, they used to. Uh, but on the sides of your head. And those exactly. Things, yeah. Well. Paraquat. <laughs> what was Paraquat? They Paraquat was the weed killer that they were spraying on it. Yeah. Well, if it's the real thing, it's poison. Yeah, they used to they used to spray a, a bug killer on it. Yeah. It was Paraquat. They said it made the dope taste better. Did they really? <laughs> yeah. there, was a, there was one scam in the 60s where they said, uh, if you smoke banana skins, you can get high. Oh, you remember yeah, that? I that. And you, lettuce. You bake them in the oven, you know. And, it's and corn silk. And you roll them up in a jar. Was that true? Bananas. No, it was five bananas put that out. I think it, you uh, know, sales were down. Like, oh, wow. Mac that's a doll. good marketing scheme. <laughs> they tell a groovy guy, you know, to say you can get high on bananas. <laughs> <laughs> well, according to somebody, you can get high on just about anything, you know what? I said some rolling yeah. papers in California that year and only two tins of loose tobacco, you know. Remember? <laughs> Those are the days there. Oh, mm. God, I remember them well. Actually, I've been writing a book about the stoner oh, years myself really? in the mid-70s, yeah. It's a book and screenplay. <laughs> You'll... Where I think I was in the 70s. Exactly. Yeah, where I seem to remember, yeah. Need you. That's what they say about the 60s. If you remember, you, if you, remember you weren't there, right. Exactly. Yeah, I remember quite a bit of it. It all came back to me after I stopped doing it. I stopped smoking pot in 1984, and I stopped doing drugs in 1987. Really? And Yeah, absolutely. Close together. I know. It must have been a wrench. Well, you know, it was just <laughs> one replaced the other for a little while, but I decided I couldn't do them anymore. And what happened was um, a couple of years when I got divorced, I needed something to do. Yeah. And I started writing and all this stuff started coming back to me. Yeah. And I found a friend of mine that I went to high school with and we started That's what collaborating. You need. you need somebody to tell you the shit you don't remember. Right. <laughs> and it will jog your memory. It did. It jogged my memory, man. That's, and That's what you need. Yeah. So I started writing all this stuff down. I've been writing a, a book and screenplay about it. But, you know, that'll I'll, I'll talk about that on your radio show. Yeah. <laughs> I want to find out more about you guys, man. So, you know, there's just so much stuff going on. You got. Well, I'm five foot two, and I have. <laughs> You're a lot taller than six that. Six breasts on the middle of my back. <laughs> oh I'll God. Rest on your back. You no, like that, baby? they're duct tape at the moment. You <laughs> oh can't. yes. I want to hear you guys collaborate on a record. It's some kind of music somehow, you know. I would love yeah. to. You kidding you know? me? Um, one of my favorite songs that you ever did with the female is what is it? Please don't touch by Girls. Oh right, that was mm-hmm. an old that Johnny Kidd and the Pirates song. Was it? Yeah. Really? Wow. It almost yeah, sounded like an original the way you no did it. No kidding. 
What wow. a great song. It was the producer's idea, Vic Mayall, God rest him. Oh, what happened to him? He uh, died of uh, complications of uh, diabetes. We should write like a Which plasmatics I had, type well, you know, thing. Yeah, that's I'm, not cool. I'm coming, Vic, you know, don't <laughs> As did the. Don't uh, say that. We need you around here. Levy. No, there saying things enough. doesn't make them happen. You Good. have to realize that. Dude, how America, old listen. <laughs> saying <laughs> things doesn't make them happen. Exactly. You know, it may encourage other people to think that they'll happen, but it doesn't make them happen. <laughs> no, not. <laughs> not, yeah. not always. Not always. Now, well, what? It that, would be absolutely amazing to work with somebody of his talent. I would love to see the two of you guys just collaborate on anything. Here, you know? Yes, there is. No, you write. You Trampoline. Do music. You're hilarious. I can't you know do what? trampoline. Well, at least I don't think I can. Would be funny. <laughs> I can see that. I tune them anyway, you know. If you could stand them up, that'd be great, you know? <laughs> then you could do it, you know? You throw yourself sideways at them, that'd be all right. Sideways comedy. He's yeah. already yeah. to the opposing curator. wall, you know. <laughs> 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 Sitting sideways at the bar at the rainbow. That, now that I'm sideways it. trampoline with no safety net, <laughs> mind you. Of course not. I can't see you ever uh, ever having anybody like trying to catch your fall, dude. It would have to be just like it'd it have to be straight up. Be a, you know, a big guy. Yeah. <laughs> or better still, a big girl. You know? Yeah. <laughs> now I'm sure you get asked about this a lot, Lemmy. I mean, you know, you achieved this legendary status, dude. You've done this for so long. It's only since we got the Grammy, really. Yeah. <laughs> Is that it? Uh-huh. <laughs> tell us about that. that. Totally unknown. Yeah. Tell us about how that felt. Winning a Grammy. Oh, they managed to get the knife and even giving us a Grammy. They didn't give it us for one of our songs, you know? Right. Yeah, it was a cover yeah. song. Yeah. They managed to. It's a Metallica it. song, right? Yeah, they've obviously never heard any Motorhead stuff, you know. <laughs> but doesn't your family really respect you when you get something like that? Well, my family consists of my mother, who's now 91 and doesn't listen to a whole lot of rock and roll. But she knows what a Grammy and my is, right? My brother and stepsister, who really couldn't give a shit between them about rock mm-hmm. and roll, you know. I'm with you. They're just jealous. No, it's because they're really, really boring. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you wonder how somebody comes out with this much charisma and the rest of the family's boring? I have one, too. I got one, too. Stepsister, stepbrother. Oh, there you go. So it's not real blood. Well, my father was a very creative guy, as was my mom. But my brother and sister, they kind of shied away and they did their own thing or something. Mean? Because they rebel against creativity. They really did. Well, really did. How, how dumb is that? No, the carriers. Not always. Around, the, the ones that pass it on, the disease. You know. I like that. Carriers. They are carriers of disease. A typhoid Mary, you know, like yeah. that thing. Yeah. That's a really good analogy. Huh? That is what it is. I hate fucking heroin. Consider the source. <laughs> I hate fucking heroin. It's taking some of my best friends away and some of the best musicians on the planet took them away too. You yep. Know, almost two claps and almost You two think claps. of all those jazz musicians back in the day that, that were just completely addicted to it and nobody could, do, nobody could, nobody could get them away from it. And it's a well, real negative vibe. To them. You can't even speak to a junkie. Yeah, completely. Not really. They're not in reality. Well, they're not in your reality for sure, you know. That's true. I mean, they're in a reality that only other the junkie. No. It's very selfish. You, know, you got that knowing smile thing with the junkie uh, smile. Right. You know, we know better than you do, you know, you poor mortal. But hearing those stories that you told us about being on it, just, you know, it just kind of, kind of. Well, hopefully it ruined everything for everybody because it's just all those stories. It's just a drag. They're sad. It becomes like a full-time thing as well. It's sure. a full-time thing. Yeah. Nothing else matters but getting that fixed. And getting nothing high. gets done. Like the good songs never get written and the paintings never get well, painted. The artwork. First, and then it all it just replaces everything with itself. You know, yeah. For like a month, yeah. probably. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Clutton wrote Layla on Smack. That was his Smack period, Did right? Did really? Yeah, that, he did. the whole Layla album was then being introduced to Smack, from what I hear from his book, you know. But like, after that... Actually, no, that was the cocaine album for him. No, that was more no, cocaine, was wasn't it? Really? That was that was more Smack? Well, that's what I get from the book, yeah. Because I remember when, with, with him, we were talking about Eric Clapton, I remember the Ocean Avenue album, the one that was right. before that, was after he got off of of it yeah. supposedly and yeah. then he found cocaine after that and then once he got off the cocaine he got a better job than ever, I know well once he got off of that then he got addicted to booze after that and I saw him on a tour when he was drunk and he had a perforated ulcer and it almost killed him from most is okay actually yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah I mean I got diabetes and it almost killed me but it didn't so it's okay yeah. how long ago was that 2000 wow <coughs> just changed the old <laughs> <laughs> what you do? You Have another die. jacket coke there, you right? Might as well die something you enjoy. Well, yeah, true, but as long as it's not heroin, man, you know. You don't enjoy heroin. No. I well, mean, people I, said I would entirely too much, and that's what scared me. That's why yeah, I knew I wasn't going to do it. Stops being enjoyment after about three months, and then it becomes like a, a need. Yeah. And a need that outlives every other need. Mm-hmm. 
that you have a, a food, nothing, sex, nothing, music, nothing. Right. Just wipe them all out, and, and all you do is look for more heroin. And I, I got a lot of funny shit to do in my life, and none of it involves looking for heroin all day. You know. Well, it's good. Thank God for that, man. Just yes. <laughs> keep coming with more music, and obviously that's what you're doing Thank right Almighty now. Almighty Griff for that, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Play that mic in there, I'll do that. Well, so Mike's on bass and. Uh, and just, on bass in the band, you know. So you're just doing vocals on it, no bass at all, just letting I Mike take over? Two, two, oh, two basses on the same song. <laughs> Great. Well, this is Motorhead right here. It's KNC.com featuring Mike Inez on the bass. We'll be back with Lemmy in just a moment. <laughs> Crank it up. Rock on the net, knac.com, the loudest.com on the planet. Motorhead, and uh, unfortunately, that wasn't the track that we were looking for, but nonetheless, a sure killer track. Because I've got no track list with it. I know. Well, we got it on here on the Well, there's one way of playing the next track as well. Well, we'll do that as well. <laughs> I promise. Was that the song that God was never there for you? That you just God was never on your side. Oh, that's yeah, that was the one we played the last one. you know, priests bless tanks, right. you know, mm. on the battlefield, you know. I mean, in, in, in the First World War, priests were going out and blessing machine guns. <laughs> You know, I mean, 
That's a little weird, man, you know. I mean, the priest will walk you to the gas chamber while reading from the Bible, which says, thou shall not kill, right? You know, hey, guys, look, it says, they shall not waste chopping me in the chair. Why are you doing this? They'll also molest your child. Oh, yes, they will do that, yeah. Oh, we can keep going That's on and on. Popular, I believe. We can yeah. keep going on about, about all the atrocities that, that go on with these things, but, you know. Well, uh, I mean, one in five American women is molested by a father or a family is member. Is that one in five? By, yeah, by the time she's seven, God. you know. There's one woman, I wrote the song about this, you know. I guess I wasn't hot enough. My dad left me alone. <laughs> Well, that's good. He was just, that was English he was just not normal. He, he probably he was just not normal, right? No, he was a good man. That's why. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, hopefully that's why. You know. Yeah, no, he was a great guy. Maybe he was turned off by red-haired women or something. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, like, <laughs> no, my mom I, I wrote a song right. about that after seeing this woman on this TV show. She said she was assaulted, and that's the word. Right. Yeah. Every, every night from when she was five oh. till the day before her wedding. By who? Her father. Oh, wow. God. And where do you go to get away from that shit, right? I mean, yeah. and you can't say anything because half the time the mother says, no, and, you right. know, da, 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 you know, yeah. like, right. it can't happen with my husband, you know. Right. right. It's, to be that fucked up and webbed up in that thing and I have no escape is the most, must be the most awful thing. It must be, like, as awful as being gay and trapped in the wrong body, you know. Right. Oh, yeah. It, it must be fucking terrible. I can't imagine, you know. Makes you feel kind of fortunate. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, most of the time, anyway. I have, I have other issues. You know what? I feel fortunate all the time, man. Look really? what I get to do. Dude, come all on. All the I get time? To, all the time. No, all the time. All the time. Nobody all the time. is feeling fortunate all the time. Uh, well, you know what? I could probably say a good 90% of the time, and a lot uh, of people yeah, can't yeah, say that. That's just not all the time. This well, that's most, well, the other time I'm sleeping, so I wouldn't know. You sleep like actually 50%, 40% of the time. Do you really? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. There's really a lot of sleeping going on. Far too much sleeping, actually. Because then they wake up and make decisions like, let's go to Iraq, you know. Yeah. I didn't make that decision. <laughs> no, I know, but I mean, you know, somebody woke up, ah, oh, what a beautiful morning. Let's go and attack somebody who has nothing to do with the problem we're facing. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I mean, it's a joke, you know. It's a joke. But I if it wasn't for all them dead kids, it would ah, be a joke. That's the worst thing, man. It's like Vietnam all over again. It is Vietnam. It? it really is. It's really Vietnam is. in the desert. But know? now I'm watching, instead of watching, like, I remember when I was a little kid, watching people come home from Vietnam. And, and they had on five channels. Right? Yeah. You know, this war yeah. you know live war. I know, I know. But I mean, I was watching people. If you're people, lucky, you see your own kid get right. shot. Right. Well, know? not lucky, it's but. Longer than World War II, this sure. Time. But I'm watching, I'm watching kids come home, my friends' kids come home, as opposed to the kids that I used to see before right. in wow. high school. My mom, my mom was a teacher, and I'm watching her students come home, like, maimed and just Legs screwed up and up things and like, yeah, exactly. And now it's my friends' kids, and it's you know, coming home. And it's the worst mines war yeah. so far as well. Yeah. Everything's like concealed, yeah. you know, explosion, like, yeah. a lot of people with, like, limbs missing and shit. Yeah, it's and really it's horrible. And then, and then we bring them home and hide them, you know. Yep. And let me know, it's 30% of them uh, try to commit suicide. Yeah. Of course you would, man. Sure. Of course sure. you would. I, when, I, when, I went, when I was 11 years old, I went down to the, to the army rec recruiter with my dad yeah. because I was watching these people come home. This is how aware I was of it when I was a kid. And I actually asked the army recruiter, please do not accept me in any kind of a war because I will not go. Good. Yeah. And uh, You may as well forget it right now. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you know, at that time, that was something that you just well, didn't do. But, you know, Hopefully, people are able to do things like that now because I'm just tired of it, you know. But I'm just tired of people sending kids in and they don't have to go. You yeah. Know? Right. I mean, I, I'd just like to give each of them a fucking machine gun and send them in and see how long they last, you Tell know. Tell Bush to send his two daughters. Yeah, well, no, I mean, that's not the point. Him himself, <laughs> you know. I mean, it's just the a big target on his head. Well, it's a consensus, man. It's, it's possibly lit up by a spotlight. Him and Cheney marching <laughs> forward there you heroically go. into the darkness. There you go. That would be really good. I mean, I wish I could vote for you for president, but yeah. uh, apparently the I laws won't allow that. I got a lot of interesting jobs on my list, and none exactly. of them involve talking to politicians. All exactly. Day. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That would be boring. Well, again. find somebody with your sense over there and get it to them. You know, Just these are the ones that we want. So. Um, um, Tell me what's on the agenda for you next. Real? And in the microphone, too, as well. I want to know. I'm doing another record. Okay. 
um, talking to... Including that particular song that we played earlier. Yeah, doing that. We're talking to a bunch of different labels, and I don't want to like play one against the other. So, right. And it's cool now, because they don't have to be like humongous <clears throat> deals the way they used to be. You know what I mean? When, when you're brand new, and they want to get you for your, every album you ever make. Mm -hmm. Now they can be shorter, and... Uh, it's all new with the internet and everything. It's so cool to be here on oh, your internet show. Midgets. Yeah, we already covered midgets. And, well, this uh, is radio the way that it should be. You know. Yeah, you can say anything you want. You Absolutely. Can curse. We're not bleeping. <laughs> we can play. I mean, really, free speech. This is what it's supposed to be. Yes. It's in the Constitution. I like expensive speech, mate. Like expensive speech? Well, <laughs> you teach you to be oh, the yeah, motivational that, that, speaker? So like the men from The Boys. I mean, everybody mm -hmm. can't do it, right? <laughs> no, know. not everybody. They have to buy the soapbox. You know? Supposedly, that's the, that's, the, that's the number one most feared thing to do is public speaking. Is it? In the, in the world, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what they Supposedly say. Supposedly, they, they say. Death. Who says? They say that psychologists... Yeah, but the people who said it obviously don't publicly... <clears throat> Maybe not, who knows? they're the only ones who feel the fear. Oh, God, that's why they wrote about it. I don't know. So fuck them, I say. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, do you know what I'm tired of? You make I'm so much sense yeah, to me, Lemmy. It scares I'm me. I'm tired of people coming up on TV with <clears throat> theories about things. Right. You know, this is this may be why so and so happens, and this is possibly because of you know and all that. <laughs> why don't you fucking find out and then come on TV exactly and tell me it certainly is? Yeah, yeah? Try it first and don't then, then fuck around. You know, <laughs> this may be shit. You know, who cares about that? I mean, it may be that sheep's blood has caused fucking earthquakes, but we don't know for sure, <laughs> do we? You know, sheep's blood causing earthquakes. Sheep's blood. Is, you know, <coughs> sheep's bladder. Who knows? Sometimes. It may be a medieval fucking law, you know, of the necromancers. I don't know. Could very well be. You better know before you come on my TV and fucking waste my time. Exactly. You know. Exactly. I'm, it, it's like almost all now, all theorists mm -hmm. on TV now, maybe, could be, has been, right. almost proved, you know. That's and they end, the, they end the show and this fuck all been said, nothing. And the rest of the people are the people that are scared because they're believing every word these people say because, yeah. you know. No, the they're afraid to rock the boat man, yeah. because they might lose their job, you know, right. some right. shit like right, that. Right. But I come from a generation where if it was wrong, you fucking said so. Right. You know, and there's so many things wrong in America right now, it's almost too late to put them right. Mm. You know, and people have, and in England too, I'm not just, you know, putting the finger at some place I don't come from because I love America. Right. But the America I came to live in and first visited is not the America that happens right. now. Yeah. A lot different. You know, because they have robbed you of your rights bit by bit. How do you think it happens, though? Them. It happens because of an emergency which they blew up out of fucking proportion. And, you know, let's get my picture taken with a fire, fireman, you know. That was so cheap, you know. I mean, Hitler had the, the Reichstag fire, Bush had the fucking World Trade Center, right? Yeah. yeah. The same thing, an excuse to order emergency decrees which stay in power as long as he does. Right, and scare and the scare. crap out of everybody and in the meantime. And corpus out the window. Everybody's right. scared. The amber fucking level of terrorism has gone up on TV. Just yeah. keep them scared and they won't say anything. That's yep. very yep. true. And well, there was that, remember that period when you couldn't say anything against look George it Bush? Look says, Lemmy for treason. president. Yep. <laughs> Not me, man. I don't like talking to politicians. At the no, but you remember they did that, that whole, that, they did that whole movie about those girls, the Dixie Chicks, where they where right. they said something bad about him, and, and, and it was like almost killed their career. <clears throat> yeah, and in two in two years, they realized you know what? It wasn't so bad. Free speech. Yes, exactly. This is this country was supposed yeah. to be built on fucking free speech, right? Unless you were black, you know, or red Indian. <laughs> but I mean, God forbid. Je yeah, but Jesus <laughs> Christ, what's going on? You know, I mean, if you can't even bitch about the president when you elected him, I think it's pretty sad, you know. Right. I mean, in England, you know, off of his head, like, you know. Exactly. In the old days. But yeah, back in, back in the, in the early days. The kids still can't do that. I think, I think the monarch could do a, a damn sight better job than all these people in suits. Well, think about all, all those. The same, you know. Well, think about all those radio stations where you can't exact, you can't even say what you just said. I know. You know? All, all of them. Well, I mean, this is why we're here, bro. That's why you're here. And That's. It, this country needs people like you, and it needs stations like this. Hear that? But the trouble is, everybody doesn't have a computer. That's true. Most of the world doesn't, in fact. Mm. Most of America does. Right. But, like, most of the world doesn't. Most of England probably doesn't, you know. And, like, that's sticky proposition, you know, because you might be talking to the people who understand intellectually whatever you're saying. Mm -hmm. The people with the machine guns in the jungle fucking don't. Right. 
and they don't care either. And I'm speaking in English too, and not everybody speaks English. That's so, right. You know. Of course, of course they don't. Me, but I they can sure. get somebody's translate it for them if they can get it. Let's hope but so. If they can get it, you know. But the thing about music is, music you don't have to That's speak. Right. You don't have to. So when uh, Pink Floyd played on the west side of the wall in mm. Berlin. Kids were getting fire hoses off the wall on the east side just to listen to the music. Uh, right. And it crossed the wall, you know. And it brought the wall down. It helped to bring the wall down. Mm -hmm. And it helped to win the Vietnam War, too. Well, you've played, you've played Germany quite a few times before and after the wall. Yeah. Was out. Um, what was it like playing there before? Like playing in we Berlin? Played east of the wall a couple of times. Yeah. I mean, it was, they, they would put mirrors under your car, like on. on, on uh, trolleys you know see if any poor bastard was hanging there really trying to escape like wow. and they was they wore ex um, nazi german uniforms with the insignia changed but they still looked the same you know it was really really That's odd you know and you had to drive along one road into berlin one road only if you went off the road you were arrested and when you were in the uh, country for like 10 minutes the volkspolizei da 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 pull over 100 west marks please Wow, you were speeding. Is that the police? So you'd have to pay, you'd have to pay them off to just to leave you alone. Just to be in the country. Yeah. It's kind of like that down in Mexico. Is that before or now? Uh, no, it, well, see, you could interchange that with several countries right now. And this right. is one of them, unfortunately. Yeah, it's know, because it, like we've reached the stage where they're hiring so many people to be security, right? That the standard has vanished. Now you get people who just want a uniform because mm. you know they can't afford a pair of shoes, right? So Join up and get a pair of boots for you. <laughs> hey, I'm not joking. I know you're not, but it's it's, it's so I. The Hungarian I, army in the I, Second World War, thousands of kids joined it to get a pair of fucking boots. shoes. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's people have different reasons for doing things. You know, I'm can, laughing because it's so ludicrous, man. Know, but it's a fact. I know, I and mean, people who want to be in a security thing, yeah. you know, is that a little odd? You know. <laughs> I, mean, I want to push no people around and tell them what to do. You in know? England, no guns, or do they do have guns? No, for cops? well, the the cops have guns now because we get a lot of uh, imported guns because a lot more came out with the two wars that America just fought. You know, but it used and, and no Russia has been fighting in Afghanistan. A lot of wars, the soldiers take the guns home. You know, mm -hmm. and then they run out of bread, severance mm -hmm. pay, and they sell the gun. You know, mm -hmm. so a lot more guns in Europe than there used to be. But On still, we have no law that says you can have a gun from a pawn shop after hours if you pay an extra 50 bucks without a license, you know. <laughs> you can still and, have it. Like, we, we were over here, and our guitar player, Wurzel, at the time, we were at this uh, pawn shop, I was looking for guitars, and he was looking at the gun counter, you know. And he went, wow, you know, look at all these. And the guy said, you want to buy one? He said, oh, I'm a British citizen, I can't buy one of those, you know. And the guy said, well, come around back at the store about 8 o'clock tonight, you know. I'll sell you one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that easy. Wow. I mean, I, I, the guy talked him into it. That's horrible. Behind the counter. To make 50 bucks. <laughs> Behind the counter. <laughs> Out the back door. Scary. Know. Automatic? No, no, it's just a revolver, but okay. it doesn't matter. No, a gun is a Anything gun. that can shoot somebody you right. don't even know from no. 50 feet, you know. Yeah. It should be outlawed. You know, it should be knives. Mm. If you have to kill somebody with a fucking knife, that's a different proposition altogether. You have to stick it in him and feel him die. Yeah. And get his blood on you. It's a lot you know, more personal. It's a lot more personal. And if you had to do that to kill somebody, there'd be a lot less fucking murder in this country That's today. It's another Lemmyism. I love it. Well, it's true. You know? It's it true. It's very true. It's obvious, too. And the thing is, the obvious facts are not getting through anymore. No. And people are skating around. Everything. People believe in everything they everything they hear. Like, it's all hearsay. The people, the people who are telling you don't believe in any of it. Mm. That's true. And people they, are They're just saying what's speak. politically correct. Right. You know, they, they're just saying what's like won't get them in trouble. And how much of a shit theory is that, you know? Yep. And when you have a system where the only one to vote for is the lesser evil. Mm. Well, that's the way know? it is right now, man, that's for sure. I mean, th there's nobody on either side that's worth voting for for the last 30 years, right? No, I can't it's think of anything. It's a shame that somebody that knows so Clinton much was about looking pretty good at world history you know, doesn't Clinton. want it. Yeah. I mean, we all bitched when he was there, but he's looking pretty good now. Absolutely, I saw I saw a uh, a uh, bumper sticker. I don't like like I said. I saw a bumper sticker the other day. That said, "I miss Bill." Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all it was. Yeah. I miss Bill. Not so sure on his wife, but yeah. I, I don't know. You know, she there'd be a lot of pressure on her if she made it, because she'd be the first woman president ever. Yeah. We'll and see. They would never forgive her. Nope. Half of the press in this country would never forgive. Her. Of course not. And, and they'd watch everything under a microscope, you know. 
and I'm not sure she made the right decisions because of that pressure. Was See, let me. I get, I get, I get real itchy. Thatcher didn't make the right decisions, did she? You know. No. I get but really. I'll say another thing. Okay. The thing that brought the Thatcher government down, what? Tony Blair put through, the poll tax. But he put it through as a community tax, and they're just paying it now because at the time everybody was in love with New Labour. Right. And what was that Tony tax? Blair had such a nice smile. You know, I don't, it was the amount of people living in your house. Oh. <laughs> That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, and and you had to pay extra if it was like if you had a lodger or something, it was double the fucking tax or something. I was already living over here by then, but they brought the government down. They had firebomb riots in London. You know. Well, in the sixties, they were doing that with all the taxes. All the rock stars were all leaving too because of all. It was the eighties. Yeah. When, when, um, but I'm talking about before that they yeah. were doing with the taxes before that oh, yeah. and all the rock stars had to move to like France or the United yeah, yeah, States yeah. and everything like that well, so. the, the Beatles right right but, but when there used to be 20 now. shillings in the pound mm -hmm. they were paying 19 and a half mm -hmm. tax wow they were getting half a, a, a penny for every record but you moved over here because you wanted to not because yeah. you had to correct or is it a combination of both? That's the same reason as when we never sold out. Nobody ever offers us any money, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play some more music, man. I get I, I, re I get really, really kind of itchy talking about politics, but... I do you know, too, but like... Dude, it's Lemmy talking about politics, it's so it's something different. You have to because yeah. it rules your life. Sure, absolutely. You know? And I don't want to get a president in here that is any worse. <laughs> I don't think... I don't I, know if we can, but wait, I hate to say we wait, can't. But yeah. Ever say that. Exactly. Because it can always get worse. Exactly. Trust me. It can always get better, too, as well. That's right. something I always believe in. Every time in the last 30 years it got better. Well, I don't know about in terms of that, but everything else I could think of, well, it can always get better. About, isn't it, in terms of that? When did it get better? Anything. Did well, it can. I didn't say it did, but it can, ah, yes, it is what can. I'm saying. It can. I'm an optimist. Well, I'm always saying. can hang over a cliff with its tail tied to a fucking telegraph <laughs> pole, but not for long, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> the tail will give up. You yeah, know? no, no, no. I won't. I promise. Oh, but that's on. beautiful. <laughs> it's very difficult, man. To, to you think of one thing. Has any president you remember ever brought prices down? Have they ever taken? Not any, in my lifetime. Have they ever taken any restrictive laws away? Mm -hmm. No. The last time that happened was prohibition. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's a long fucking time ago. That didn't last very long. Anyway, I gotta go. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody on the camera. Well, spoken from from a true genius, the one and only Lemmy. Hang on for a second, okay. just for a second, there, guys. I'm gonna play one tune. I'm gonna play um, something from Inger right here. Lemmy, if you will, just hang on just for a moment. All right. Just um, a moment. Okay, you're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna play track number two off of Inger Inger Laurie's record. You can find you. Anywhere, obviously, you know where to find Lemmy. He's recorded a new record with Motorhead. Ingrid, thanks so much for you. Um, Thank you. Coming out with new stuff, you could find her on the uh, on the on the Simpsons as well. It's uh, it's Bart Simpson's Treehouse of Horror. Look for Lemmy and Inger and Alice Cooper, Gene Simmons, Rob Zombie, and Pat Boone. So look for that. Look for you on MySpace, Inger Laurie, L O R R E, and you can find her. And uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna my own. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to play some stuff because I want I want these guys to do a couple things before you leave. So anyway, um, it's KNC.com, the loudest.com on the planet. From Inger's uh, CD from what was this, three, four years ago, something like that? Transcendental Meditation. Meditation. It's track yeah, number like two. That. It's called Beautiful Dead. And uh, thanks a lot for coming down. You know, you guys, so much for having you guys are welcome anytime to talk. come down here anytime. You're always, we'll always welcome. What's that? You may live to regret that. Story. No, never, 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 never. Not at all. Wait till your album comes out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, believe me. We're going to be here. We'll, we'll let you stay as long as you want for that. We'll play every track. Uh-huh. And all the requests I... Sure. Okay. So Globally. You, you can go and have a couple of smokes. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll bring you a whole pack, man. So, anyway, it's KNAC.com, the loudest.com on the planet. Thanks a lot for coming down, guys. Appreciate yeah, thank it. Thank you. All right. Pleasure. Good here's, show. Here's Inger.
I mean, Beverly Hills. automobiles are driving by, you know, and yeah. like one 747 taken off is like 200 cigarette most smokers smoking 200 cigarettes a day for exactly. 2,000 years. You know? Exactly. Don't tell me I can't smoke on an airplane. You know, it's dumb. Right. Right. And noise noise restrictions too. That's the other one that gets yeah, me. And they're yeah. giving they're giving tickets to people in Harley's. You know, you have this guy. Every time you sound check, guy comes in with a little media, you know, and he says, uh, "You cannot go higher than this." You know? and, and, and they say, "It didn't switch on yet." You know. <laughs> I can imagine you're really good friends with the meter guys. You know, being well, we, in we, Motorhead. We, we get them drunk, you know. Seven or nine. We have to listen to it Still to this day, you you played the loudest show I've ever been to at the Whiskey and Go Go. At the Whiskey, oh, my birthday. Yep, yep, a couple years back oh, when you guys so played there. Nice. The speakers, you had your own PA system in the in the whiskey. And no, it was, no, we had a quarter of our own PA system. A quarter of it, oh well. Wow. But I mean, you still, you brought in your own stuff to, to yeah. amplify what the whiskey did not have. And that was still the loudest, loudest show I've ever been to. And it's proudest. Small spaces and see the oh, yeah. If I had a ponytail, still, it would have been oh, flying in the, the air. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. But, uh, well, you should grow the ponytail, you know, sin is just obviously you know, the, the best bet, right? You know, the most... Don't worry, mine's going too, you know. The best no motorhead doubt. video... Not too much forehead going on there. It's killed by death, you guys. That is so rock and roll. Not it's the, the most rock and roll. I love that. How do you know when you have no, the new I stuff? watched... Well, you got new videos? I want to see your new videos. Yes, we have new videos. Well, new-ish, a couple of years. Yeah. Okay, cool. I just love when the motorcycle comes out of the grave. It's just very well done. Yeah, Absolutely. that wasn't me, though. But it was badass. It looks cool. I tell you how badass it was. The guy drove down. They they, they dug a pit, right? Mm. Covered over with leaves and stuff, you know, the, the far end. And this guy went down it at 45 miles an hour. No kidding. Down this ramp into the pit with no lighting down there. <laughs> with about that much clearance on either side. Really? And came one take, man. Came straight up out of the hole. It'd have to be one take. Yeah, I, I mean... <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, if he had gone <laughs> an inch to one side, he would have been in Arizona by now, right? You right. Know, underground. Digging. Now, were you watching this the whole time, or was this just yeah, yeah. something we they did in pre-production? You know, we were all there. Did wow. he do all of it? Wow. He, he just one take. He didn't yeah. rehearse it, nothing. Just did it. Yeah. <laughs> in, in my clothes, I was thinking, oh, screw it, motherfucker. They're the only clothes I got with me. You know? No doubt. <laughs> did you do any of the I want to go to back. in that video? Well, you can see me on it. When the know. girl's on it, right? Yeah. That's you. Yeah. But um, no, I didn't. I, I don't ride a bike. I don't pretend I do. Where you did know. you find all those girls? I drink too much to drive anything. What? Where did you find all the girls in that video? Uh, well, they they weren't found by us. They were found by the people who live around there. You know, oh, right because on. they know where to go to find the good ones. Right? <laughs> now, how did you how did you guys get to know each other? Just through the Simpsons thing. I've only known Lemmy like That's less it. than a month. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I thought you guys had known each other for years. Me out of nowhere and said. Simpsons, I said. Yeah. Oh, this is how Janice Garza, we have a mutual yeah. friend that did mm -hmm. the Lemmy biography, which I thought was amazing. And right. she's been my friend for years. Have and you I read said, that? I'll no. give you a copy. Yeah, I'd like really to get one. well written and a really interesting story, too. I, I you know, about Hawkwind, the whole thing. Sure. And, uh, man, what's that song that I love? Astral Soul lyric? My Astral Soul. Oh, Seven by Seven. Yeah, Seven by Seven. Do you have that song? I might. Man, that would it be up. amazing if you could find that. Really? really? You had that? Wow. I might. You never know. Yes. You never um, know. So I was just telling her... You'd be on Space Ritual or... Uh, we got him strictly by Motorhead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, my friend who worked, uh, Bob Zaw, who uh -huh. worked at The Simpsons, asked me... Bob Zaw. Bob Zaw. How did you spell it? Z-A-U-G-H. Wow. I, Bob Zaw. Bob Zaw, yeah. And I told him a bunch of people I knew, and then... Uh, I don't know how your name came up, Lemmy, but I said, I don't know him, but I have a friend that knows him, and I called Janice. She walked out of for fear of your hearing. <laughs> I just said uh, to Janice, I said, do you think Lemmy would be interested in this? And she just gave you a call. But I mean, who wouldn't be interested in The Simpsons? Because sure. it's just a legendary thing. Sure. A few people, you know, I mean, yeah, any, well, anybody doesn't like people with big, thick heads that are yellow. <laughs> 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 Gotta see it, man. Gotta see it. Yeah, no, it's gonna be a beautiful thing. Good. And you know, it's written by Lemmy. How can it yeah. not sure. be cool? Watch out, sure. pop kids. There it is. It's on the, on the so Lemmy's so holding it up here on the on the webcam over here. They so. get to put it on advert for their new album. On the Did you see the Alice Cooper commercial yesterday in this in the in the on the Super Bowl? And they no. had a commercial what? with Alice really? Cooper. For what? I it was. Saw, I uh, saw Tom Petty play. I'm so yeah, happy Tom Petty did a good job won. yesterday. Right. He did. He did a great job. Great job. He always sounds good. But they had a, they had a, a commercial where there was um, something that, I forgot what it was. I think it was for a Bridgestone tires or something like that. And it was this lady going around the corner, and 
spotting the deer in the headlights. You know, and then she goes around another corner, and it's Alice Cooper staring <laughs> like that with those I eyes, with the eyes, and holding a snake. Right. <laughs> oh, <right on. laughs> and then another one. There was somebody else. I can't remember Something what it was. One about that. What's Scotty that? Mine used to run the snakes for Alice, right? Right. Scotty, my best friend, you know, of it, and like, it, yeah, he was uh, doing all the all the uh, looking after the snakes for Alice. He'd hand them to him and take them back, you know. Right. And he handed him one of the House of Blues silence woman. <laughs> And he handed him one at the House of Blues, right, in right. Hollywood. And Alice walks on stage and the snake took his shit all over him. All over him. Yeah, I heard about that. And I saw Scotty like this. <laughs> Running out there yeah, to clean I up said, the snake What's shit? What's the matter? He said, my snake shit on Alice. <laughs> and the smell, I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. I mean, Alice had changed his clothes twice after the show. <laughs> he could still smell it. I mean, what did he eat? Dead mice? Well, no, they only eat every two months. Oh, Imagine, right. you know. Yeah. So it's like fermented dead mice that he's been eating, you know? Yeah, fermented, Which, curdled, you know. Like, I would imagine if a snake has a colon. Bones and skin and everything. Oh, God. <laughs> and shat all over Alice Cooper mm. on stage. Yeah, generally south. Wow. <laughs> I mean, he is no longer employed by Alice No Cooper, doubt. But I don't see how you could tell. And the snake is a pair of boots by now, I would imagine, right? Oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> or a handbag, you know, whatever. Yeah. Or, or a thing for your hat. Yeah, little hat, hat band. band yeah. <laughs> Remember that hat? Remember that snake, Alice? Here. Yeah, this brings back a lot of memories. Doesn't, it? <laughs> Doesn't smell like he did before, but yeah. hey, you know. Um, it smells better now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot better. You have handed me a CD, Inger. What do yeah. we have here? There's a song called Burn on there that's only on Sympathy for the Record Industry CD. Okay, do you have any idea what track it is? It's either nine or six. Yeah, that's well, there's really a really help. You'll know it. Sympathy for the record industry. Jesus Christ, that's a dodgy title. That's even worse than it's a good label. The it's either going to be label. nine or number seven, so that kind of helps me out because I got to do this live on the air. I don't hear drums, you know it's not it. Okay. A big, huge drum. Tell us about the song. Burn. It's now there's uh they're doing a huge site about uh Rob Ritter. He was in Forty Five Grave. He was right. in the Gun Club. Right. I think he was the in the Gun bags. Club. I did a video for them once. Did, did you it? really? You did it for them? I want to be a cowboy. Wow. Um, yeah, the gun club. And he was an amazing bass player, and he was in the Nymphs for two years. Mm -hmm. Shock horror. <laughs> yeah, and Revelation. then he oh. died. Yeah. But this song was about him. Okay. It's Wait, called right, Burn. About dead guys? He was a great bass player. It just like says, I love the way you played, Is you know. a good dead guy? Good dead guy. Okay. <laughs> He's a good dead guy, and he was a great dead guy. He was bass a great player. live guy. Good, uh, He's a, great a good dead guy. Player. Great bass player, but a good dead guy. His MySpace <laughs> is so funny. If you go on, the, somebody made a MySpace well, for him. I'm to fight now. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if you go on MySpace, the second best. Where it says best about me guy. on MySpace, Rob's says, well, first of all, I'm dead. Let's get that straight. Right. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Yeah, but you can you can add me since you, he was dead or when he was alive. No, somebody mm -hmm. made it for him. You can oh, add me if you wish. Him. No, it's somebody else. They could get you under the trade descriptions act. Truly. <laughs> His family <laughs> could sue you. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're using a facsimile of my son's voice saying he's dead. You can, you, <laughs> that's pretty bad taste. It is very bad taste. I'm just thinking now you, the, on his MySpace page, you can add me if you wish, but yeah. don't expect an instant message from me because I'm much. dead. Yeah, so, back to you exactly. Yes, you can keep the joke going. <laughs> keep it going. Oh you know I mean? Exactly. <laughs> Let's play this song, all right? Once yeah. again, the name of the song is Burn. Burn. Okay. Uh, was Ah, <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Oh. You know what? There you go. We can go on this too. It's all about cremation. Nice segue there, Lynn. Is it I don't know yet. Are you listening? No, but I'm about to play it. So let's give it a if shot. It's not. It's going to be some horrible, really bad song. All right. Well, good. we'll figure it out in a second as soon as it starts to play. Right. So this is uh, this is Inger and the Nymphs. Or is it just strictly Inger on this? It's Motel Shootout. It was this little band I was in in New Jersey for a second. So this is before the Nymphs? No, after. After. Yeah. Okay. All these guys are from my hometown, New Jersey. This is like when we when you went back to go to art school and you recorded, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Got it. During the art school years. Art school years. And you know I'm still in it. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, obviously. With art this, center. You know? so. All right, here we go. We're going to be back with uh, with Lemmy and Inger in just a second. And if uh, this is not the song, we're going to go switch right to the song. Yeah. Okay? So here you go. It's Burn. Right. It's KNAC.com, the loudest.com on the planet. We'll be back in just a moment. Yeah.
KNC.com, the loudest.com on the planet. That's a big feedback ending. I like that. Very nice. That's Burn. And tell me the name of your band that, that it, it, you recorded that with. Motel Shootout. Say that in the microphone. Motel Shootout. Motel Shootout. Motel no. Shootout, motherfucker. What are you, like, deaf? Well, yeah. <laughs> I am. Reservoir Dogs. Lemmy asking me if I'm deaf. No, no. I was asking the general listening, almost listening public. Well, speaking of which, dude, um, you must use some major hearing protection when you're playing live, right? No. No? Never. Just go right on none. I'm telling you, man, the human body will adapt to a lot of shit, you know, and I'm the proof. Absolutely, <laughs> dude. He told me how old he was off the air, which I don't know whether you... I don't you, give a shit. I'm 62. He's 62 fucking years old and here rocking. See, so don't lose hope, guys. <laughs> exactly. Right. Don't lose hope. You too can dye your hair and look this good. <laughs> <laughs> Except for me. I can't do that. Huh? You can dye your head. I could dye my head, yeah. It'd look pretty freaking silly, I wouldn't it? I love that your whole oh, body has adapted, silly. Lemmy. You're like a rock and roll Frankenstein. Your body adapted to hearing and yeah. every I other see thing. The stitch marks, see? Hard living. <clears throat> so no, no, no hearing. It's what I do, though, you see. It's normal right. for right. my body. Right. Yeah. Well, well, you've been doing it for so long, yeah. It's whatever you do to your body on a regular basis becomes normal for that body. Isn't right. It's sort of like when you take a tiny little what? bit of cobra venom, and then if you get bit by a cobra, you won't die because you've been taking it the whole time. Yeah, it's like I building up your... I cobra venom, but then <laughs> I never got bit by one either, so that's... Well, you know the Thank analogy. God. sort of cancels out, you know. Left that on the hat. So like, why do you hold your hand up like this, and he keeps the elephants away? So there's no elephants for miles. You see? <laughs> right. oh. Yeah, uh, oh, the guitar, the priceless instrument. Oh, it's all right. He dropped the guitar. Don't worry about it. Bastard, you. The tool of her muse. <laughs> What's going on there? It's not okay. working still. Don't even worry about it. I don't understand. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, There's so. Play the second chunk of that, then. For some reason, the screen on my computer just kind of like stopped. Uh oh. Uh -oh. I know. No. I don't understand why. Not the expensive KNAC computer. Glitch. Could be. Could be expensive KNAC computer. You see something that I don't, man. <laughs> this well, is like one of the home ones, ones that we got, you know. It's expensive ones. I don't know what's going on with it. So who knows? Just kind of thanks. Went out. Three First World War dollars. It was expensive. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. But anyway, um, are we still on there? Oh yeah, we're still on here. Absolutely. Um, I'm just <laughs> guessing. I'm looking at my meters over here. I'm guessing that we are. But uh, we're on there here, yeah. I don't know. Hopefully he didn't kick in any of the wires when he was over here, did he? Uh, was that it? Well, was anything going on? does seem to be accident prone. I hope not. Me too. Yeah, that would suck. No. Yeah, it would. <laughs> There's no wires over there. He was all the way over there. Okay, that's fine. No. Yeah, then. But then you're not talking about the guitar, but now he's over there with the yeah, cameras. But when that <laughs> that's fine. I mean, who knows his background? You know. But that mean? looks like a very old computer, too. Oh, yeah. It's well, not old. It's uh, um, vintage. It is. It's vintage now. Yes, exactly. It's it's a collector's item. So does it still play CDs? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Maybe we'll play some of your CDs. How's that sound? We'll try the one that we tried to play before. Yeah, try a little that bit. one. That one's awesome. And then we'll hear some. So tell us something about the new the new Motorhead uh, CD. There. Tell us. I'm dying. I want to know all about it. I'm about to write the songs for it. We're going, I'm, this is the first day I'm going in later today, you know. Okay. And doing it, obviously, in L.A., but, I mean, you know, yeah. just... He wrote three songs last Otherwise, night. Otherwise, that'd be long walk, you know? Now, how do you guys do it? Do you guys normally go in and you do it live in the studio and then just mix it down from there, or do you no, just... No, we, uh, we, we sit the drums down first. Right. It's just a rhythm guitar, you know? And then wipe, excuse me, wipe the rhythm guitar and then just all layer it down, you know? That's the only way to do an album, really. Right. <laughs> how do you keep up with Nicky, man? Yeah, How do you keep good. up with Nicky D? He's just amazing. He's good. He's the best drummer I ever played with, and uh, I played with a few. Unfucking believable, man. Some of the stuff that a guy can do with the drums. When people come up to me and they go, like a guy last night, in fact, in the Rainbow, he said, I was a big fan, you know, of uh, Eddie and Phil Taylor. I said, yeah, man, that was in 1982. Exactly. Wow. Move on. Get over it. Move on. Right. Yeah. Isn't it funny how you're You can't be stuck fans? with everybody, all the other bands in exactly. 1982. Move on. You know. So many people that are, are just so about that. Like when I talk to people about KNSC.com, they think it's all about like, you know, Motley Crue and yeah. Dokken and, and things like that. I was like, wait a minute. No, this is, we're upgraded. We're listen to it. Yeah, obviously. we're, you know. yeah, we're all about new stuff, man. You know, listen to what we got. That's why I really want to, that's why I really want to know about new, uh, new band projects you're involved with. Obviously new Motorhead, but. Right. So you're looking at what? Like a release for 2009 or 2008? It'll be out this year. It will be out this year. Good. Good. 
But it better be. Yeah. We also have a I copy. Need the money. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's Try the bread and butter. If it doesn't work, I'll give you another alternative. Well, I got the new one as well too. I got the uh, the uh, better Motorhead than Dead. Not new because it was done for our anniversary. Th right. anniversary. Thirty years. Thirty so years of Motorhead, we'll man. Try that first track of Inferno. If that don't work, we'll All right, play. let's try it out. This one uh, was recorded. Matter of fact, here we go. We're going back a couple of years. Is it this, working? Yes, it's working. It was so recorded when? Uh, the one with Steve Vai. Track one or track two? Track one. This track one. Steve Vai, yeah. All right, Steve Vai on guitar with Motorhead. We'll be back with uh, with Lemmy and Inger in just a moment. It's KNAC.com, the loudest.com on the planet. Crank it. Rock on the net, KMEC.com, the loudest.com on the planet. There you go. Of a, a little bit of fuck up at the end there. We'll see. However, you know, I still have a chart coming. Those Engineer, are original en scratches that Lemmy put in there himself. Yeah, Engineer Lemmy gives me a CD. With my own teeth. Man, we are having all kinds of uh, like problems in there. My computer monitor has gone off too as well. Oh, no, so. it's back on now though. It's almost, but it's still kind of like... Slow. Yeah, you can't even see what it's doing, whether it's coming on or coming off. You or... can see better than when the screen was blind. <laughs> I don't know, man. See, M Engineer Lemmy is supposed it's to help me out. It's giving you clues, you see? Yeah. It's saying, replace me. <laughs> or go back to where it used to be and just use CDs, you know? Like, you know? All right, track two. Track two. All right, we'll do that one for you next. That's, that's from the uh, from the new band. It's the Headcats Head CD. Cat, yeah. Headcats. Right. Cool. 
Are you going to be playing any shows live? Um, we just did with- one in San Diego. San Francisco, too, right? Two days ago. Yeah, but San Diego's a lot more recent. Oh. But uh, that's it for the, the right now. You know I mean? I'm in the studio and I have a motorhead, you know, so. How long does it normally take you guys to record a Motorhead record? Two months. Two months? Yeah. Writing and then recording. Right. See? Here we go. Hopefully the computer's going to be back. We shall see. That's where most of my Motorhead catalog is, but we got some of this. So what? I want to know more about what's going on otherwise, too. Um, tell me tell me more about like future collaborations. What's what's going on? You see, you don't plan them. They, they happen just happen. The, they happen on the fly, you know? I mean, like Steve Vai was like that, you know? I was going he just dropped by the he studio. Was coming out, I said hi, Steve. He said hi, Len. What are you doing nowadays? I said we're doing a new album. And I said, do you want to be on it? Ha ha. He said, yeah. That's it. Two days later, he was. You know, walked right I in and just did it. My pinky to sing a song with Len. And then uh, oh, Dave Grohl, the same thing, you know. And uh, Mike Inez. I was at the Rainbow, and Mike came in. He done come in the Rainbow. I'll Nicest walk. guy in the world, man. I love Nicest Mike. Nicest guy in the world. And Steve Vai, actually. Right. And Mike. I bought Mike a drink and he bought me a drink. I said, he said, are you working now? I said, yeah, we're in the studio, you know. He said, well, I'd love to be on a Motorhead record. I said, and so you shall. What Ding. band was he in? He's in Alice in Chains. Right. right yeah. He's the... He was an uh, ex-Ozzy. He was with Ozzy. Yeah. Man. Great bass player. Man. Absolutely. Yeah. Nicest guy you'll ever meet in the world. Bass players on that track. I'll play it in a minute if you like. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we'll do that for but sure. Right now, this is... We're gonna play a little uh, of uh, Headcats. Headcats. Headcats yeah. So this is the uh, this is the Jerry Lee Lewis song. No, it's no. Track. Okay, track number two off a of Headcat. So Lemmy and Inger Laurie in the studio. In case you guys are louder, uh, you pray louder. louder, louder, louder. We're gonna play it very loud. All the right. only thing is, on here I gotta go. I gotta get this thing put back up on the studio again. I gotta go. Okay. I gotta get pray this thing. Up. If you play it louder, it might go back. Play <laughs> loud. <laughs> play very loud. Look, guess yeah. what? Lemmy has a Chinese accent. How'd that happen? Alec Crupton. It just happened. Oh, Eric Crapton. When he played Rayra. <laughs> like the band Roudness. I Remember that? Roudness, yeah. Roudness, great band. Good stuff. All right, here we go. This is... <laughs> Eric Crapton. This is Headcat right here. It's KNAC.com, the loudest.com on the planet. Here we go. Crank it.
for Rock on the Net, KNAC.com, the loudest.com, and the planet brand new from Hetcat featuring uh, Lemmy and others. I think this one is unplayed, actually. Okay. Ah, kiss of death, right? We'll have to play that one next. Yeah, what tracks were they, Roger? Aha. Six. Six. Roger knows all. Roger's got a guitar over there, Ben. Yeah. But uh, you well, guys want to do some... Uh, shaped like a guitar. Huh? Shaped like a guitar. It is shaped like a guitar. It is actually an explosive device. And <laughs> I, I want all your money. It's an uh, IUD. I'm it's an IUD. To Cuba. <laughs> I fly to Cuba, man. Uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, that would probably work as a good IUD. You'd probably El Cabong, you know, hit you on the head with one of those things. Never, never know what hit you. Cabong, yeah. You could probably do it. It's interesting. Or you could use a set of drums, kaboom. Kaboom, not a bomb. A kaboom and a kaboom. Billy Mays here. Who hates that guy's voice? <laughs> Billy Mays here. The top of his voice always, man. Yeah. Tell me about Mighty Putty. And, uh, <laughs> oh, the guy that's on the eighteen wheeler, 1800. But, you know, Jesus Christ. Didn't he sell like the, like the, the cleaner stuff that you put in the washing machine Oxymoron, as well? Whatever Oxymoron. Oxymoron. Yeah, right. Hey, what about them giants? Yeah, hey, how about, about them, them giants? Nuts, huh? How about them giants? <laughs> Very cool. Dude, I'm telling you, there's so much stuff that I want to talk with you guys about. How about guys the UFOs about. in Texas? All those people saw them. Like I, I saw one people. once. Tell us. I want to hear that. I saw a UFO in, uh, at the House of Blues. No. <laughs> it was a different... Really? Oh, it was a oh, band. Oh, that was a band. It, 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 it was oh, a band. It, yeah, when Phil Mugg was still with Right, yeah. right. Tell me about the UFO you saw. I was playing a lot. 1966, I saw my UFO. Did well, you? It wasn't mine, you know. There's four of us, band I was in, we were coming home from a show across the Yorkshire Moors and this thing came over the horizon and went stum, and stopped dead. And we don't have shit that does that, right? Stopped right. in the sky? Therefore, Just stopped. it's somebody else's. Right. Yeah. It went zang and stopped like that and we all got out of the car and watched it and it was like pink light pulsating like that. Mm -hmm. And it stayed there about a minute and a half we all stood there watching it and then it went zang to original speed from standing still. Wow. To right angles over the horizon. So I don't have any problem with you if I was on other there. Yeah. Sure. You know, I mean, I don't give a fuck how many theories you want to talk about it. You know, I saw it, so it exists, you know, because we don't have shit that does that, therefore, somebody else, you know. Exactly. And nobody's talking about anything that does, so yeah, it's got to happen. I, I know, saw one too. It's, it's so pathetic, you know, the, 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 uh, the Army and Air Force fucking stands on things. If we don't know it's there for sure at, at the top level, then it's not there, right. you know. Right. And, and like, we don't want to panic the people. Why not, man? Why not panic the people to see what happens? There's too many of us anyway, right? <laughs> We're going to be standing up to our knees in the sea in five years anyway, right? Pretty much. So, you know. Already are in Santa Monica. Thin out the fucking herd, I say, you know. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't run fast enough, you're fucked, you know. So that's that was 1966, you said you said? Yeah. Wow. Before I even started drinking, the man drug. That's what I was going to say. That was a big drug year in 66, too, but. Not for me. 67, not for you. Wasn't it? Wow. That's when I had three joints and I thought I was something of an authority. And, and Neville <laughs> said to me, do you want to try acid? And I said, sure, you know, and he'd give me this little white pill. Right. And it had an owl stamped on it, right? Right, Owsley. Yeah, from Owsley. Right, Because he was Kenny. a real groupie. He, gave he was the guy. About 5,000 of them, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, I thought, oh, it's a little, I just ate it, you know. And he was going to cut it into four because it was 2,000 mics. Right. And I had, like... I know four times the usual dose of eighteen hours. Like yep, the last time, the last time that I did acid too, they put we used to buy it in in the jar and it was on a spot about the size of a quarter. Now a normal one would be like a little teeny little spot on, on a piece of bottle. Little pill. barrel shaped pill. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But the, uh, with an owl sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I wish I kept it now. <laughs> the stuff that you know what I do. Is so cool you know what I do that. have the best acid. No, no, this was a, like a little pill with an owl. Oh stunt. wow! Right. It was Owsley. Yeah, Owsley. Owsley, cool. Owsley Kenny was the guy that, that made Augustus the acid. Oh wow, Owsley that must have been worth money. Augustus Owsley Stanley the third. Right, Stanley. Wow. That's right, Owsley yeah. Stanley. Yeah, but he. I, he also made a Mr. Natural acid, which is the best, the R. Crumb That's right. guy. With his and I have, in it? I have, um, eight hundred. I have a sheet of eight hundred Mr. Natural acid things framed on my wall. Without the acid, right. of course. Right, but without. it's framed on the wall of my house. Get the acid out of there. Well, it's not the acid. It's not. It's just the. Just it's the just paper the actual, before they put the it paper down. Like before they put it on there. What's that? Does that have like a sell by date? <laughs> No, 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 yeah, exactly. Not, not Expiration date. After, 13, 16, <laughs> after 1968. So I have a creative question, though. Lemmy, how did you how Come did on, you I'm meet talking about acid with Lemmy. But Jimi when Hendrix. When did I get to do this? That was creative. Right? Yeah, but very. But he knew Jimi Hendrix. I think that's so badass. Around how did you run into time, him right? in England? Yeah, you yeah. met him? Because yeah, he yeah. was American. What year was that? 
67. 67. So a year after you saw the UFO, you met Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, how about that? I That's bet he cool. got off that UFO. He, at the same time I saw it, almost, he was writing a song about it. Mm-hmm. I, want to, I want to hear this in the microphone. Tell I me think about that Jimmy Hendrix yeah, give me the fucking microphone. Yes, exactly. Give him, give him the fucking microphone, you Take media it. bitch. He's talking about, he's ta- he's talking about <laughs> Jimmy Hendrix. I want to know about this. So anyway. Jimmy Hendrix was a fairly medium-sized man of uh, African-American, American, as we say yeah. these days, and uh, Native American descent. Mm-hmm. If you can call it a descent, I think it's probably an uplift myself. Right. Since the screw-ups <laughs> the white race has done so far, I don't think we have anything to look down upon other races about. Exactly, you know I mean? exactly. It's a beautiful thing that you just said. I love it, it is. No, it's just obvious, honey. So where, did, all, huh? where, did you meet, where did you meet Jimmy? Uh, well, I, I, I moved down to London, and the only guy I knew in London was this guy who used to work for the Who and the Mersey Beats up, up north, you know, that I met. And he was uh, Neville. He, he makes porno in New York now. Really? Down, yeah. He's moved on. Oh, I've been over there to see him a few times, you know, like you do, you know. Right. Um, but uh, I said, can I crash on your floor, you know? And he said, yeah, and he was sharing a flat with Noel Redding. Wow. Right? Excuse me. <laughs> And uh, this is this is my bit, all right. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, this is Jimmy's bit. Pipe down, he's talking. So they uh, <laughs> they needed just an extra guy for lifting and humping, you know. And I got hired. Really? Ten, ten pound a week and all the wood I could eat. Now, how yeah. long did how long did you go on the road with him? About eight months. About eight months. We were doing the best part was the radio shows because we had a lot of like little radio things. I don't doubt England. that at all. <laughs> and uh, they just released the Beatles. Uh, radio show uh-huh. Saturday Club it was called it right. everybody played live you know? right and Hendrix did a lot of weird shit on there like stuff he never recorded like there's Bob, video Bob of that Dylan, out can there can you please crawl out your window that was, he did that on a few shows you know he never did it there's you know. video of that of that stuff out what is that? from Saturday Dylan, Club please crawl out your window that's a song just yeah, the, yeah like, stuff that he never played live anywhere else he just decided that's what he was going to do that yeah, there, yeah and he would play a lot of blues on that old Epiphone 12 string he had you know like I've watched him for hours backstage man I mean, it was really, uh, you didn't know then what a privilege it would turn out to be, mm-hmm. you know, because you thought he'd be around for years. I mean, he was the best guitar player. Mm. Absolutely. The best. Yes. I mean, you know, no competition. Yeah, yeah, you can't even, it's not even a question. Even now, there's mm-hmm. no competition. Right. People have, you know, progressed so far, you know. Well, you know, I don't think it's progression just playing scales faster. Yes. That's just faster. It's not better, you know. Right. It's he was like, just such an improviser, man. It's amazing. Well, uh, if you want to see control of feedback, right, and it, it started out like he got feedback and he didn't know what the fuck to do, so he tried instead of just turning it down, he would like then try and find out what was happening, you know, he was and really he learned creative. to control it and make it work. Yeah, if you see Monterey so. when the right, beginning exactly. of the wild thing, yeah, it's incredible, man. Yep. You know, what he does, yep. and he's not doing anything; he's just moving the guitar uh-huh. around. And use it on his mic stand it's and pump it, doing everything he, he did with it. He knew the sweet spots, obviously. He, he'd do the uh, somersault and come up playing, you know. I mean, that's crazy. And, and, and chicks would go nuts for him. Now, were you working at the Monterey show? Were you working no, for him then? No, that we were gone by then. Over in, in England, you know. Okay. But like, chicks would go nuts for him. Absolutely. I'm nuts. I mean, it's like Elvis stories, you know. Yeah. A line outside the dressing room, you know. Were you playing at that time, Lemmy? Yeah, I'd already been in three or four bands before that. But I mean, I was. I wasn't in no band like that, you know. No, what I mean? Definitely not. And the day he died, I was supposed to audition as bass player. Oh no, kidding! How about that for a pisser? Huh? But Missed, somebody else would probably missed it by it. that much. I couldn't, I couldn't play bass anyway. Then that's right. He was in London when he died too. So yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. And he was alive when they got him. He to needed hospital. a bass player by then. He needed. <laughs> Mainly a rebreather. But yeah. So if he yeah. lived, maybe there wouldn't have been any Motorhead because you probably would have been I the bass player. No, nah, if he would have lived, he would probably have like, been playing shit by now because he mm. was starting to get weird at the end of his life. What mm. do you mean weird? Well, he was he was planning this uh, electric orchestra mm-hmm. with 200 musicians. And, he was playing with Miles Davis was, too. Yeah, planning on doing that. going to be fucking awful, you know, no yeah. doubt. No if rock was, involved. You've never seen that work. You know, there's no. a lot of musicians who have done that. You know. Well, he was tripping his face off, too, by then, anyway, a lot, too. He I was doing a lot of acid. Stopped tripping, uh, Did he? Largely by the time he died, yeah. Really? In 67 and 68, he was really tripping. Really? But the the black power structure over here got at him, you know, mm-hmm. about playing with honkies, you know, and all this right. stuff, you know. Right. Did they fuck his head up? And, yeah, I think so, you know. Cause he guilted him out? He, he kind of felt for it, you know. And then he did that band of gypsies thing, which I thought was really inferior to yes. what he'd done with the experience. Yes. Did you know that groupie, that black groupie, Devin? No, I didn't know, but I, but I I, mean, I wouldn't have minded, you know. 
That was some tasty girl. Which is sad when you think about the fact that he was only 27 when he wow. died. You yeah, think yeah. about what yeah. he would have been doing. And he'd already been in the Airborne. Yeah. You know, and done all that parachute stuff and wow. played with the Isley Brothers and I can Tina Turner. And, and James Robert. Brown. He lived. Jesus Christ. I mean, he packed a lot of stuff in there. Absolutely. You know? In 27 years. But you don't think it's like that when you're doing it. So. No. Nah. But when you're doing something that will live forever, you don't know that. You just fucking doing what you're doing. Well, he also had no contemporaries either, man. He set the rules. He still doesn't. No. There's nobody. Yeah. I've listened to guitar players right through the years from... I started listening to music in 1956, right? And I've listened to it right through to now. And Hendrix was the only one, as far as I'm concerned, that really did anything different mm -hmm. that nobody else has done since or before, you know? Mm. And it's such an insult when somebody like, and God bless Lenny Kravitz, but you know, Jimi Hendrix is, are you experienced? And then Lenny writes, are you going to go my way? It's such an obvious The rip thing off. is, I, I've seen the real one. There what do yeah. I need an invitation for? You Hello. know, like that guy, you know, with the symbol, right? You know, I, I mean, the guy's from Minneapolis. What do you want out of life, you know? Mm. <laughs> well, that's one of my great regrets in life that I wasn't old enough to see somebody like that, but you know. No, 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 no. It's all right. I've seen you. I saw Gene Running Vincent when he was you. good. Did you see Gene get Vincent in the Blue Caps? No, I saw him uh, about three years later with the English Blue Caps, the okay. British Blue Caps. When they were doing all those British tours, yeah. Yeah, he, well, he, he was living there, over there for mm -hmm. a while. He was with the Outlaws mm -hmm. first. Hey, let know. me, did you ever meet Brian Jones? Yeah, unfortunately. Did he have, he had a lot of illegitimate kids, Why he was a jerk? Yeah, kind of. What was it, just he, stuck Well, up, you know, he, he could be really nice to you, or if he was in a bad mood, he'd really, like, he had one of them vicious little English tongues on him, you oh, know. Yeah, he just yeah, yeah. whittle you down to a little stub in about four. Well, he was also another one that did all, way entirely too much acid, you know. He, he was did a way entirely guy, too much everything, you know. Yeah. I mean, right. <laughs> short, though, right? Maybe he had that angry that, that, short man thing. Well, you know, everybody just doesn't have a Napoleon complex. I know. No. I know a lot of. I know a couple of midgets who don't have a Napoleon complex. <laughs> True, true, man. I know a midget wrestler. <laughs> I'll bet. A wrestler. I know. And uh, on, on the back of the shirt, what does it say? You give me a shirt. It said, I support... Midget wrestler. What was it? I support midget wrestling. Uh, no, no. It was I support midget torture or something. <laughs> midget violence. I support midget, midget violence. violence. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, right. You see, if you're, bo if you're born into that... Right. I mean... That's kind of a disadvantage, man. And you come up with a shirt that says that. That's great. Yeah. And that is really kind of a British humor thing. Sure. You sure. Because a lot of Americans don't get that. They, no. they don't think you can joke about tragedy. And it's tr you can, you know. Yeah. Of course because you can. Because that's what makes it funny. Exactly. It's tragic. You know? Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's like the, the human ear. You know, they had a kid and it was j just a, a head. No, uh, no body at all, you know. And they didn't have a holiday for years. And they went abroad finally, they got a head study, you know, when he was 16. <laughs> and they came back and they said, were you all right? Well, we were right, darling. And the head goes, yeah, I was all right. And he said, we bought you a present. He went, oh, really? Not another hat. No. <laughs> <laughs> <You know. laughs> Why isn't it funny? Dude, I'm telling you, man, we're going to book you at the comedy store, dude. You got to do some stand-up on top of it. If, like I said, you have to stand up to be able to do it, but. Well, you know, on one leg. Sideways comedy with Lemmy. I like Over that. Over on the sideways down. Oh, there you go. One of my favorite songs. Yardbirds. Is it really? Yardbirds. Love they it. did a lot of better There's stuff. one band that I've seen in L.A. that plays it, and they play at this parade in, in Pasadena, the Duda Parade, every year. It sort of takes a lot of the power away from it. Exactly. Anyway. Well, but there's a, a band, float, there's a band called Snotty Scotty and the Hankies that play that song. That's the only <laughs> band I've ever seen play that song live, besides, good, obviously, the Yardbirds. Huh? That's a good name. Oh, yeah. Telephone Bill and the Smooth Operators. There you go. Good one too. <laughs> Junk Man and the Family and Jewels. Red, red Hot Poker <laughs> and the Wound Fuckers. Because <laughs> it cauterizes it. it? <laughs> cauterizes it right there. <laughs> 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 All right, dude, that's it. This has got me going. i got to play some music. Now. Okay. All right, we're going to play some Motorhead. Track Do six. It. Track six on uh, the Kiss of Death CD. Right? Yeah, surprise for you. Oh, God was never on your side. Yeah. Tell us about the song. Well, God was never on your side, so I heard about it. That's it. There you go. That's <laughs> it. Says enough. Story. And it's a mystery, mystery on guitarist on the solo. See if you can guess who it is. Okay. We'll have to crank it up real loud so we can try. So we've already had Steve Vai on one song, so yeah. it's got to be somebody different, right? Right. Okay. Let's give it a shot. All right. This is Motorhead right there. God is never on your side. Was. Or was never on your side. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
Uh, here we go. It's Motorhead. We'll be back with Lemmy and Inger Laurie in just a moment. I hope you guys are having a ball. It's KNAC.com, the loudest.com on the planet. We'll be back in just a moment. Okie dokie. If the stars fall down on me And the sun refuse to shine Then may the shackles be undone May all the old words cease to rhyme If the sky turn into stone It will matter, not at all For there is no heaven in the sky Hell does not wait for our downfall Pure Rock on the net, knac.com, the loudest.com on the planet. Dot com, mind you. What's that? Dot com. Dot com, absolutely dot com. See, you got it that time. That, uh, of course, is some Motorhead. I want to thank, uh, once again, Lemmy and, uh, and Inger Laurie for coming in. What a great show, huh? Did you guys have fun? Hell yes. How can you not, man? This is the way it's supposed to be. But, uh, oh, I remember fun. Yeah, that was what, 1977. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was Under the Gun right there from Motorhead. That was the track that we wanted to play. So. That was the track that Mike Hines wanted us to play, at least. That was a groovy track. It was cool. Dug Two it. bass players doesn't always work. Nah, well, no, not always, no. But uh, that one that one definitely did. You and Mikey Inez. Two nice guys. So anyway, thanks a lot for coming down, guys. We're going nice uh, to right. catch up to you soon. Nice as Mike. I was nice when I was his age, though. <laughs> You're still nice, man. Uh, once again, I cannot thank uh, Lemmy Kilmister uh, enough for hanging out with us tonight, as well as uh, the lovely Inger Lori. And uh, all of a sudden, I'm out of time, you know? Me being junk, man. This being KNAC.com, the loudest.com on the planet. And, uh, oh, my God. That was what you would call a fun interview to do. You put a microphone in front of Lemmy. And let him talk about everything. What did we cover? Politics, history. We covered um, philosophy. We covered, obviously, new music from him. We covered old music from him. We covered stuff with with special guests on CDs, on stuff that you may not have heard before. Unbelievable. And then add to the mix, we got the lovely Inger Laurie, who's one of my favorite guests. And I hope yours, too, with some of her music. We found out about cartoons involving Lemmy and The Simpsons. Unbelievable. I don't know. I'm, I'm very satisfied. I feel like I just had, like, the best sex in my life, you know? <laughs> I hope you guys uh, enjoyed that as well, too. But uh, all things must come to an end. And for me, uh, that is my show this week.